Welcome to Amaranth. It's a troubling time here. Powers across the world work to contest the efforts of the Cult of Dragons. An enormous organization devoted to summoning the tyrannical devil, devil, tyrannical devil goddess Tiamat. A trial the world over attempts to resist with every waking moment. Over the nation of Terracona, there wages a war, a bloody one between the united forces of Aurelia and Ceres, and the power hungry cult and its allies. But these issues are not of our concern today. The worldly issues that the powers that be struggle over are ignored by the common folk. And on these stone-ridden hillsides, where horses are reared and memories of war are splashed with ta ale in the taverns, the concerns of the common folk are all that matter. It is October 23rd of the 110th year after the return of the gods. And in the small town of Timor, things are quiet. The sky is overcast and breezy as the autumn winds wash over the rocky plains of Nosfidania and fill the senses with the sweet, familiar odors of fallen leaves and underbrush. The town is a round settlement. A number of structures dedicated to the running of the small town, a small city hall, a blacksmith, a temple, a cobbler. In the plaza of the town, there sits the Dragon's Breath Inn, the only source of relaxation and libation within Timor, and a handsome one at that. The ale is world famous, a dwarven brew that shines a clear amber. Outside of the inn, a tall man in a fine coat stands, a mallet in one hand and a tall wooden pole in the other. The morning is punctuated by the sounds of his striking of the stick, driving it slowly but steadily into the graveled plaza. The story of this man, and all of you, is important. A happening of pure coincidence that all of you would find yourselves here, in this town, at this inn, at this time. You all know each other, having traveled to this town. Maybe you met the night before, maybe you traveled together. It doesn't matter. Last night you drank one last drink before you went to sleep as the Dragon's Breath Inn shares its private brew with its guests. Your reasons to be here in Timor, you're likely just passing through. It's a small stop on the roads to the capital city of Malachor, a metropolis rumored to be ruled by benevolent, or at least neutral, vampires, and known to be a place where the opportunist can make a lot of gold quickly. The whys and hows are a choice I leave up to you. As you awaken, on this cool morning on Time War. This man, you will find, is beyond your control. He pounds the stake into the ground. One stroke, two, another. Cedric, you happen to be looking out the window as he works, the dust kicked up by the hammer blows staining his clearly fine trousers a pale gray. After a moment of watching him work, he stops to roll his shoulders and stretch the pain away, and for that moment you see he looks up at the tavern. Up at you. Only you swear the face you look upon is featureless, hidden in shadow. But there's no hint of texture, no clue of eyes or nose or mouth beneath it, just a blank wall. Then he strikes the pole again and you realize must have been a trick of the eye. Or a shadow cast from the suns above behind the clouds. He's clearly an elven man. Sharp features and remarkably bushy eyebrows. He resumes his work and the moment that arrested you has passed. The noise of business within the tavern below is obvious as laughter and chatter are blended with the rattling of dishes and clatter of silverware. The smells of fresh bread and thick honey climb the stairway before you, and when you do finally look away from the window, Cedric, I need a Christmas save. Mm. <laughs> I think I'm awesome at that. That's good. First roll, first roll, first roll. Oh, we Here didn't we display. Fuck. That's okay, what'd you roll? I rolled a four. <laughs> Okay. 
Just one moment. Did you send out for dinner? No, I sent the beautiful work. I was gonna bring down here, but Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm Sorry about that. With a four on your charisma save, Cedric, as you turn away from the window. Well, everything pauses. Where you were yesterday doesn't matter. Your plans that you had today, well, maybe they've changed. Because you hear, in the back of your mind, you were the first to notice. Interesting. And then, as if that didn't happen, as if that was just a passing hiccup in your thoughts, it's gone. And you're standing in the hallway on the second story of the Dragon's Breath Inn, looking down the steps, as you were a moment before. What do you do? Um, Cedric usually takes a minute or two to wake up in the morning. He would kind of shake that away and... Oh. Aye. And he'll head down the stairs into the inn to find a empty table to sit himself down at. As you sit down, somewhere on your character sheet, perhaps your inventory, perhaps just a mental note, please make a mark that you have one point of corruption. Lightful. <laughs> a good start. <laughs> All right. Nathaniel, what does your yeah. morning look like? How are you doing today? Are you an early morning guy or a late riser? Definitely a late riser. Okay. Super late riser. Roll me a perception check. Killer at those. Look at that. A 14. That's good enough. Could be worse. As you're laying in bed, there's this... just drilling at your eardrums. It's coming from outside. It's really quiet, but there's something about its cadence, something about the bass in it that's just killing you. <laughs> Fuck, I hope this is real. And I'm gonna like roll out of bed and walk over to the window and look out. You see a tall man in fine clothes driving a stake into the ground. Can I see what's the, what's on the stake? Is it a sign or just a regular fucking post? It just looks like a post. It's pretty narrow from here, maybe an inch and a half, two inches around. How Doesn't, far away is he? From you? In this second like, story window? In front of the end? Uh, from the front of the end, maybe about 20 feet. Is the window open? Could be. It isn't right now, but you can open it. I'm gonna open it and kind of like lean out, and just you know, very groggily. You can't possibly have to do that right now. The man, the elven man, turns and looks up at you, and he says, "I'm starting to pay to do it now. Is that a problem?" <laughs> if it were a pro no, no. Carry on, and I close the window. He resumes well back. hammering. Go back downstairs. Okay, as you head down the stairs, uh, Jaro. Jaro. Jaro, sorry. Are you a morning person? I, I, I'm in, I'm in a ladrin. I don't sleep. <laughs> so, probably. So, uh, where are you then? Are you in the tavern right now, or are you off doing something else? No, I am. I'm down in the tavern. I'm spending my time down in the tavern, um, probably communing with some spirits at the moment. Uh, the veils are thin, and uh, in cities such as this, it's not uncommon for me to be approached by uh, the dead who speak to me through uh, as a as a phantom. Um, Boy, I'm really struggling getting th that accent down. But anyway, um, you chose a hard one. So I did. I may be 
be rethinking that. So Jaro <laughs> is a um, uh, is a phantom, so he does have some abilities that uh, tie in with uh, that's his subclass. So he sure. is has has some abilities that tie in. If I can find them. Well, for the moment, you're sitting down in the main lobby of the town. Yep. Uh, and as you're sitting there, you're like meditating, trying to concentrate on your abilities. As you're focusing, suddenly in your ear is filled, Hey! What you want? You've been sitting here all morning! I'd look, uh, uh, Jarl would look around um, to see what he can see. Is it, Trying to determine, is this something coming from beyond the veil, or is it within his, his actual space? Immediately to your left, and you have to look down to see it, is a black kobold. Uh, she is wearing a leather jerkin that you see there is the symbol of the tavern on her chest, and she has a wooden platter in her hands, and she's looking up at you, and she says, Yeah, you! Are you hungry? Thirsty? I'm afraid not. I'm not uh, not hungry or thirsty, but it's nice to see you. Yeah, right. No one says that to old Scratch. And she, like, wanders on past you. Um, everyone can hear this horrible kobold's voice uh, as it ricochets throughout the entire room. Cedric, as you're moving down the stairs, you would see this happen. You see this kobold uh, di be dismissed by the individual you know, Jaro. Uh, out of curiosity, as Cedric's making his way down the stairs, Nathaniel, you would just appear behind him. What does everyone look like? Are we just sticking with our profile pictures, or are there any details that you want to add to your appearances? And we'll start with Jaro, as he's the most recent appearance. No, I think I'll, I'm generally sticking with the, the profile picture. Probably not quite as, like, leafy and, like, outlandish in terms of that but the general general idea of natural leathers and, and such probably the other um outstanding characteristic would be that the the rod that he that he has the immovable rod is probably attached to one uh one thigh kind of like um daredevil style you know so he's he's got that out he has a tendency to probably play with it and twirl it like like drumsticks and um it's very ornately carved with a lot of iconography common to like the seasons and and such sure. uh the only other thing i would say is he probably right now is a little more brighter colored in terms of like his hair is is uh currently more floral in terms of coloring uh skin is light is is probably has a slight undertone of, of green to it you guys have as you've traveled with him after after he goes through his trances while you guys are sleeping, the color of his skin and his and his hair tends to reflect his mood on like how well the day went, and that's kind of how I, I see him community see us like playing through his variations of face stepping that are tied to seasonal attributes. So if he's really pissed, it might be more summery, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fire sure. around, things things like that. Okay, so Cedric. As you're descending the stairs, you're next. Now, I don't know if all of you noticed this. If you mouse over the tokens of your allies or yourself, a blow-up of your art will appear, giving you a better impression of what they look like. Uh, oh, nice. For the sake of argument, here is the barmaid. Good old Scratch. As you make your way down the stairs, Cedric, what does Cedric look like? If there's anything you'd like to add. Yeah, so... Cedric, while he always has his furs and coats and wears, he, uh... When he doesn't have them on, you'll notice that the top of his, bra the top of his hair is braided all the way back. Um, and obviously his eyes aren't always glowing blue, but only in the most special of occasions. Sure. There's a moment when he's chill, right? Like, yeah, it's not yeah. always so serious. Yeah. Um, coming downstairs, hearing this delightful woman uh, wish my friend a good morning, I would probably be looking to walk over and join him, saying, uh, ah, "Girl, she's about as delightful as we left her last night." What about you? You want anything? Or are you a freeloader too? Of course. Give me I, look at her. I, 
And she's I'd hardly already, say I'm a freeloader. Like as you're protesting, she's already walking away. Right. <laughs> I look at Cedric and I. Um, Jaro ha, is a chef. You know, I mean, he has that. The way that I, I think this reflects is he, he basically has the equivalent of Lemba's bread that he carries with it, whey bread and such. And so he's like, I, I would hardly call what I'm doing freeloading and like take a bite off of my own uh, my own stash. From behind the bar, you hear, Well, you ain't paying us! <laughs> uh, Nathaniel, as you're descending the stairs, and Cedric and Jaro are clearly within view, um, your head pounds in the rhythm. It's really, really irritating. Cedric, as you glance up at Nathaniel, I need you to make a perception check, but while that happens, Nathaniel, what do you look like? Because your art, while it is a little more abstract and surreal, we can use that if that's what it is. No, he's got, uh, he's definitely, this look of consternation and frustration, he's probably like pressing his hand on his temple or rubbing his hands on his, like along the bridge of his nose. I picture him just kind of like following Cedric down and, um, especially if he's got this blistering headache. He looks, he's got very much like a David Tennant Doctor Who build, uh, you know, with the suit that is a little bit too short at the sleeves and a little bit too short on, uh, like, down his shins. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, this massive black kind of cruel iron sword on his back. It doesn't appear to weigh him down. It looks weightless. He just walks with this kind of weird, kind of hunched and haunted look to him. Um, and I think probably his scratches running past and he's behind the quarter of... Uh, Cedric, he's just like reaching out with like a moment of uh, coffee, coffee. Coming right up! You hear from behind the bar, and it's just as grazing, grating as you imagine it is. Um, Please tell me you guys can hear that. I can definitely hear it. No, no, the. Well, The tap, I'm tap, start, tap. Like, tapping my fingers in. Yeah, I assume he's done beating the post in, and I'm just hearing it. No, he's my... still pounding it. Oh, it's still happening. Then I'm. It's, the question is still stands because he has all these hallucinations and visions. That's why the art is all like weird. He's got. He's haunted by these visions, so he's mm -hmm. just like, uh, "Please tell me you can hear that." It's you, real. As you say that, you hear a voice in the back of your head, Nathaniel, one that you're much more familiar with. Uh, and it says, everyone can hear it. <sighs> With your 18 well, that means on we can perception, make it stop, right? With an 18 on perception, Cedric. Something's weird about Nathaniel. He's, I mean, he's already weird. Um, so this, you might just write this off as normal. Uh, but the torchlight and lantern light within this tavern. The shadows it's casting behind Nathaniel are shifting. They flicker with each cadence of the pounding. It's just a very subtle amount, but with an 18, you catch it. Did you, did you drink something foul last night? There, Nathaniel? And I'll like hold up my hand and try and like mimic the shadow on the wall. To see if it's if it is applying to me as well. No, yours looks fine. Drink? No, nothing. I mean, I was a late reading, I'm writing. Jaro, please roll me an insight check while this is happening. Just tired, I think. How about you? Don't worry about it. This is the good stuff. <laughs> the good stuff doesn't keep you down. A large carafe and mug of coffee is set in front of you. And then you hear... Two silver! I will uh, plunk down a gold piece and ask for breakfast as well. You got it! And then, and then he will just kind of retract down. and start nursing his coffee. Okay. As your breakfast continues, 
Food is brought out, bread is provided, and all the while, out the main window of the tavern, you can still see that tall elven man driving this stake into the ground. He's almost done at this point. It was, from your memory, Cedric, nearly maybe five feet tall when he started. It's now only maybe ten inches left to go. He's making slow progress. And the pounding Nathaniel hurts. What is it? I Does it appear it just looks like a wooden... I, I'm going <laughs> to flick on my detect magic eyes. Okay. Uh, it's a little far from you. You're going to have to get a little closer from here. Do you go investigate it? Mm, I mean, this has been going on for a minute. He's driving it five feet into the ground. It's not not a 15 minute ideal ordeal. Correct. This is a sledgehammer going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, that's um, why it's so loud and obnoxious. He's been working it. For quick a while. cursory look over my companions. Uh, um, if I didn't do it last night with the tech magic. You've, I mean, I assume you've done the amount of snooping that you would do, um, as your character. Uh, you detect that the object that Jaro fiddles around with is magical. Uh, uh -huh. appears to be transmutation. The... Cedric, what magic item do you have? Did you pick anything? Uh, it's a, it's a token hanging around his neck. <clears throat> Above table was more looking for it. There's not like a big black shroud around Cedric's brain that says one corrupted point or something. <laughs> no. Okay. That would be too easy. I, yeah. I, <laughs> if, if this goes on for a protracted amount of time and I flick my detect magic vision on or I try to look into that realm and see the weave and I realize that it's like 15, 20 feet short, I'm going to like kind of finish my coffee, put it down, and push away from the table. Um, if it's real, we can ask him to stop. What's the worst we can pay him? Don't stay too long over there, my friend. Uh, something's off about that fellow out there in the square. Yeah, he's pounding a fucking wooden stake into the ground for no fucking reason. <laughs> or what? Is, uh, is this, is this an adventurer thing? Does something off mean that you know something about him? Oh, the adventurer thing is to trust your instincts and, uh, can't quite put my finger on it, but something doesn't sit well. He's, a. Uh... I mean, Christ, what is he? What could he possibly be ach achieving? I don't know. But my instincts say that if he keeps doing this, my brain's going to leak out of my ears. Perhaps we should just go over there and talk with the man. I'm, like, already oh, walking towards the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pressure anybody, but I will, like, yeah, yeah, wave a hand if you come with. Absolutely. Jaro is definitely up and moving. Begrudgingly, but Cedric would would follow. Okay. John, do you see something suspicious about this man? Apart from the fact that he's pounding a wooden stake into the ground? I'm sorry, Dan. Who was that at? You. You. Okay, sorry. Um, can I... I'll, I'll take a look at him as we're approaching. I mean, other than the fact that he's an elf, I don't think I've spent any real time at this point uh, looking at him closely. Okay, so, firstly, uh, you all are leaving the tavern to go investigate and speak with this guy i'm asking yes okay yes uh first nathaniel you do detect magic on the stake you detect conjuration magic and a lot of it uh, oh that piques my interest okay. dramatically uh jaro go ahead and roll me an insight check as you get a look at this guy as you how about homeboy has he got any magic homeboy the guy with, the guy who's pounding the stake does he appear to be just a normal dude? Um, roll me an arcana check. I would love to. Jaro <laughs> with the six. He wow. looks like a guy who's working. He does not look like the right. sort of guy who would typically be working. He's wearing very fine clothes. 
Uh, but he's working with intent. With a 17. I, I think for... Hmm? Go no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I All insist. Right. Uh, well, I was going to say, I think from, um, you know, coming from from the Feylands and, and such, like, the, his dress probably doesn't strike Jaro as out of character, necessarily. Like, fine garb in the... Uh, among the the courts of the Fey is not uncommon, and and even the commoners in the, in that space, I think, might might dress a little above their station or, or what we would consider to be normal here. So that doesn't strike me as odd. And I kind of turn to Nathaniel, and he's just a laborer. I'm not quite sure what you're upset about. Let the man do his work. Perhaps <laughs> you should uh, drink a bit less at, at night, Nathaniel. We've talked about this. I'm not hungover. I'm just tired. My good man, please. You have emerged, you stop for a moment. You've merged from the inn, and you are approaching this guy. Uh, he's still. Boom, boom, boom. The stake is. It has maybe five inches left to go. Uh, and you call out to him, and he stops and looks up at you. You think I want to be doing this right now? I'm willing to pay you not to. Well, they're paying me a lot to finish, so unless you can match their offer, it's getting driven into the ground. Does he... Mm. Do I see anything odd about this guy? Not <laughs> that I'm up closer. So, first, Who's they? let me let me, <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead. let me address the Arcana check that was an 18. Okay. Um, okay. Or, sorry, 17. You have seen magic magical garments and magical items before and you've also seen like things that are mundane your detect magic is detecting nothing but it's detecting an absence as if something is being hidden uh, you're seeing if this guy seems fishy Cedric uh, also uh, any, any physical appearance I uh Items that may have uh, he doesn't look to he doesn't look armed immediately uh, aside from the large hammer he's carrying. Um, Does he have facial features? That's kind of what I'm trying to get. Let me let me help you out. I'll just move uh, the map so you can all see what you're looking at here. Uh, one moment, please, while I render this. He looks like a normal half elf now with really bushy eyebrows. He does look like a half elf um, with bushy eyebrows and a gorteish beard. Let me uh, just. Pull y'all over here. Let's see. Where did it go? There we go. As you all stand outside, you can zoom in to see exactly what it is you're looking at. Uh, this individual, who's now stopped and is looking at you, uh, he's got the sledgehammer in one hand and the other is kind of like at the small of his back in protest of uh -huh. the muscles aching. Um, he doesn't... Who would like they be, exactly? The tavern? Um, the mayor? Why are the tavern and the mayor paying you to pound stakes into the ground? I'm going to take a step closer and see if the stake has anything on it that indicates to me what its conjuration magic might be about. Roll investigation. Fourteen. With a fourteen, you see that there is... Uh, a symbol on the head of the stake, and there is some lettering around it. Uh, you understand all languages, correct? All written, yeah, all written languages. Then you can read it if you get a little closer. You're a little far from it to actually read what's on it, but you recognize celestial writing. Is he answering me when I'm like, why are they paying you to pound stakes into a cobblestone square? It's a word. Huh. Mind if I take a peek at it? He kind of looks at you and down at the stake and he just shrugs and backs up. Yeah, I mean, if he... I'm looking to avoid peering forward and then having my head caught between a sledgehammer and a stake in the ground. 
This man does not appear to try to kill you right now. He doesn't seem to be violent and is not swinging the hammer at your head. Go ahead and take No, him. 100%. But like an hour ago, I thought that it was an imaginary man that a demon had put in my brain to make this noise because I'm tired. Mm-hmm. So I'm a, I'm a caging motherfucker. Uh, yeah, Apparently. I just want to peer in. Uh, it appears to be a ward against what? Uh, well, you're not really sure. When you read it, it says, We reflect, we protect, we live. In Celestial. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna, like, take a step back and peer up at the man. Well, uh, suppose we'd better let you get back to it, then. Uh, is there someone that I could ask about this? I And I'll, like, flip open my book and kind of tap at some of the runes, and I, there have got to be dozens of scribbles. Bit of a... Bit of a magic guy myself. Roll Persuasion. Dirty 20. Uh, with the Dirty 20, the guy looks at you and he kind of scratches at his beard and he says, All right, I, uh, Look, I'm just trying to drive this and get going on home. Um, you could probably talk to... the kobold in the tavern. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. but, and he goes back to driving. Well, I, I'm sorry, man. Before you get back to your work there, uh, I and he like holds I, up I, my hammer, like. Yeah, I, I, I get it, man. I get it. Um, but is this the the only stake you've driven this morn? I. Are you planning on driving any others? No, this is it. Then I get to go home. All right. Appreciate your time. He kind of looks at you all. Can I get back to it then? Have at it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he immediately begins driving it once more. Uh, all of you stand out in the square of time war. Yeah, I was gonna. I, I, I can imagine like Jaro is is kind of looking around at the space. I mean, Nathaniel is obviously um, a bit out of sorts. Cedric. I mean, what do, what do you look like right now? What are you doing? As Cedric is just standing there with his hands on his quarterstaff, just kind of watching okay. this guy quietly. All right. I, I think Jaro is taking in the environment. What is the... I mean, are there townspeople moving around? Is it a busy square at this this time of morning? I mean, it's morning, right? It like, looks like, it's a, like just it, looks, after it looks like a pretty lazy morning. Um, people are okay. going about their business. There's nothing exciting happening right now. Uh, there appear to be several carts of what looks like cut logs that are being brought uh, toward the south side of town. That's the most interesting thing that you can see. Right. I think Jaro kind of cuts between um, Cedric and approaches Nathaniel and says, I don't know about you two, but I'm going back in the inn. I do think I'm a bit famished after all, and, and we might as well talk to that uh, that little one, Scratch. I don't disagree. What? Curious what they want to protect against. And I mean, yeah, this I'll thing seems to be the in. genuine artifact. I like thumb my pencil at it. It's thrumming with magic. Like, an auspicious amount of magic. It's not any business of mine. The guy says as he's just driving it into the ground. Yeah, no, I understand. I just um Hmm. And now that I'm up close, mm -hmm. right next to him, I wanna really look at that detect magic. And I'm still getting that impression that things are being shielded from me. Uh it's nothing's changed. Like yeah, he's got he got he has like a, a a vest on that looks nice enough to be magical or to evoke that I, sh I should be getting some signature off of it and it's not there? That was kind of what you described to me. Yeah, he looks like a, a noble from Malachor. Which is why it's a little weird that he's driving a stick. Yeah, I think we should get back in the end. Yeah, let's get back in the end. 
Okay. Now turn Jar towards the others and walk in. Uh, I think Jaro is already headed back in. And a pleasant morning to you. You as well. Uh, as you are getting towards the door, you hear in the back of your head, Nathaniel, there's more than you know going here. Uh, more than I know going on here? Is that what he said? That's what he said. And at the same time, I need a wisdom saving throw from Jaro. All right. Is that Hitting the all these voice? wisdom rolls, which are not, <laughs> not my strength? You know, I mean, the familiar voice is a scary voice, but yeah, it's it's the same one. It's it's the one you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. You okay. chose this. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. I'm I'm just making sure. It could have been. Sure. It could have been. I'm like, very, There's more yeah, going Nathaniel on. Nathaniel is you know. also very John Constantine. <laughs> Yes, sure. so that is totally in line. Uh, yeah, okay, I got that in the back of my brain. I'll whisper you if I if I think back. How about sure, that? is that okay? Uh, that works. Jaro, with a fourteen, yes. there is a moment as you've turned and you're looking back towards the tavern, and you see the window of the tavern. You can see its God reflection it. of the other side. God damn it! <laughs> Are you okay. Yeah, no, you're good. Sorry, I got. You can see uh, yeah. the mirrored reflection of the other side of the town, and far off in the distance, beyond it, you see an enormous black figure, just for a split second, looming over the trees, far, far away. Do I recognize that black figure, or is it just an amorphous, like shadow kind of? Roll me a perception to see how good a good look you get at it. A real good look. Okay. Go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Your elf are you, eyes. Are you Tell proficient? Elf eyes do. Are you proficient in either Arcana or history? No, I am not. Okay. You can choose to roll me Arcana at disadvantage. The DC is real okay. high. But there's a possibility sure. you've heard of this. Okay. I can choose, or is there a... You can choose between Arcana or History. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it's a disadvantage. It's sure the same for me. So it, it's... Oof. Yeah, that's bad. So you got a good look at it. Uh, so I'm going to describe to you what you see. It is a towering figure that looms over the trees. It is not moving. It stands, looking in your direction. You see that from the center of its black, malicious-looking head is a spiraling, dark horn that reflects light that does not exist for you. From the left and right sides of the back of its head, you see more horns twisting away from it. And between them, you see a pair of eyes that glow dark blue, Every bit of it radiates malice. I, I think there is um, there's a, a kind of a pall that falls over Jaro's face. I mean, it, again, he he himself is um, not a bad person, and he does not does not tolerate or he's not he's not used to engaging with that type of thing but so it, it stuns him a little bit to see a manifestation so evil in front of him and i uh, we we see that kind of just painted on his face as soon as he he does that he he probably tenses up i almost imagine that as he's kind of turns he sees that in the glass he spins around towards his friends and there's almost a frightened look on his face as he as he reaches for his uh rapier uh, in a, just a moment as, and I imagine, I don't know, Nathaniel or Cedric, how do you guys react to him? Cedric will kind of notice the, the angst on his face or the, the fear and kind of like put his hand on his shoulder and the other on the butt of the hand reaching for the rapier and say, hi, we're all right, friend. You're safe here. What, what is it you saw? He, he just, he, he points, he goes there over the trees. I just saw a, 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 a 
I, I can barely describe it, and, and then I proceed to like try. It was all twisted horns and and uh, like a ram's head and a unicorn and <laughs> and just dark blue eyes, and it was just uh, something I've never quite seen before. It, it black and amorphous, and above the trees themselves, there's something evil coming in towards this town. Edric would whip his head around. Like he was trying to catch a deer before it pranced away. Does does Cedric catch any glimpse of the no. figure on the horizon? Not at all. You just see a clear sky. I've seen plenty of things that pass through the uh, the Feylands. I've seen plenty of things that cross over through the Vale, and I've never seen anything quite like that. My the blood within my veins feels as uh, not unlike when winter falls upon my uh, upon my soul. I... You're muted, Dan. He appears to know. Okay. Uh, Are you trying to talk, Dan? Dan's muted. You're muted. Uh, <laughs> first question, how is the scruffy eyebrow guy reacting to this? Because we're still standing outside, right? We catch this in the reflection in the, the window. Uh, you glance at him, he's kind of shaking his head, and you hear him muttering, Lost at adventurers, fucking bull bullshit. You know, yeah, got it. Trying to <laughs> um, I will look to Jaro and say, maybe proffer him even my, like, charcoal and notebook. Put a hand on his shoulder and say, Can you describe it to me? And give him guidance. Yeah, I give him as, as detailed a description as I can. Um, to convey it real. as well as you can, I need you to roll me a charisma check. Uh, okay. Well, you have guidance, so you can add a d4 to it. Okay. Uh, there you go. 15, 16. Okay, with 16. He describes it pretty well. I'm a big Elder Tour guy, am I? Have I seen anything that matches this description? You can roll me either Arcana or History. DC's still high, but you don't have disadvantage. Dog shit. You do have Inspiration Just if you'd like to use one. Uh, already? <laughs> I don't know, man. You no, I, I'm good. Okay. Uh, yeah. You've heard of lots of things that look like you're looking at it. Right, you're looking it on your your charcoal sketch, and it looks terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not sure what it is. I'm still privately concerned about the other things I just saw, and I want to kind of usher in to the tavern and get it. I I'm I'm oh, it, I when Jaro like takes it down and looks up at me or passes me the notebook back, and I look down at it. I see this. I think this. I'll look at him, and then I'll just kind of cast an eye back toward the trees. It's not there now, is it? It's gone. But right. it's coming this way. It was watching from over there. It had its eyes set right on this town. Nathaniel... I think we should talk to Scratch find out I what agree. they're so worried about if hopefully it happens to be this massive creature then we're one ward in the ground already let's just cross our fingers and hope that she doesn't start describing some tiny infinitesimal threat and we've got two epic problems on our hands after you so you return to the dragon's breath Okay, as you head back into the inn, heh, you find Scratch over by the counter, and she, like, pointedly looks at your table. She says, So you're gonna eat after all? I've suddenly decided I, that um, eating might be a good idea. I'll take the same as him. All right. And breakfast is honeyed toast covered in sausage and bacon with eggs. Plateful. Uh, Nathaniel eats a disgusting amount for how, like, gaunt he is. He eats like a man with a tapeworm. Okay, hold on. 
Those of you who eat Scratch's breakfast all um, regain, or rather gain, 10 temporary hit points. So go ahead and add those. Keep track of those. If you eat. <laughs> yep, you do have that still. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know how I did that. I don't know either, but you did, and I'm impressed. I've Thanks. not seen anybody <laughs> do a thing in Foundry I wasn't I was confused by, so you've you've done a thing. So I guess that might be a as we're like eating the meal, do I feel any different with a point of corruption? I, no. Am I aware? You don't even or, know it's there. Got it. Okay. I'm gonna say this and I you're gonna hear it from me a lot. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so you eat breakfast. As you do. It can we call Scratch over while we're eating? You can do whatever you want. I think... She might not listen. <laughs> uh, but you can try. I mean, I think if we have that interaction outside, and he says to ask the kobold in the tavern, we go back inside, and whenever she brings out the breakfast mm -hmm. for Yaro, or Jaro, Jaro. Um, think of, like, pickles. Uh, this Jaro. Scratch. Um, well, yeah, what do you the, want? The post outside. The man said that you arranged for it. We should ask you about it. Is he mad I burned I his bacon? Curious. No, no, he, he didn't mention that. Uh, the the post is It's not my fault, scratch. okay? It's just that we put too much wood in the burner and it just got really hot. So, my mistake. Made from scratch. Made from scratch. I like it. Like <laughs> right. The dragon's breath too. Is this whole place yours? No, <laughs> no. I just work for him. So, who's them? Uh, the man outside mentioned the same them. The tavern owner, the mayor. Is is that who's paying for these posts to be erected? The scratch. I don't know if you know this, but they have magic in them. So there's magic everywhere. Yeah, the man outside the, said the wards for protection. Is there something we should be worried about in Time War? It's to... I know what you're talking about, okay? I remember this. Vigo, the owner, he had a problem with people casting spells in the tavern when they weren't supposed to. Anything, any magic above a certain energy gets cancelled out. Or at least it will once he's done driving that in. I'm gonna look back out. Uh, As you still look... Yeah, the so last much. blow of the hammer as it strikes it the hand, the stake is dropped smooth and level with the ground around it I need each of you to make a perception check please mm. I mean 8 this is like uh, oh you should still have guidance it lasts Jarrow. for one roll I believe Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, well, I got a dirty 20. So. Okay. Uh, Jaro, you perceive, suddenly, you feel it in your chest. It's like... It's like an impact that passes through you. Just like a... Like a wave of energy that passes from your back through to your chest. And you feel it pull at the air in your lungs. Just a little. It's as if you've um, just walked through maybe a curtain of water, but there's mm -hmm. no wetness. Um, right. So, I mean, as, as soon as, as that happens, I think um, Jaro's hands... I mean, he's he's been listening to this exchange between Nathaniel and Scratch, and he's been picking at the food, not eating it tremendously. He wasn't really that hungry. Um, and th there's probably a, just a, a slight, like, tensing of his body. Um, and he's, for a moment, I think he's confused. He's trying to determine, is this the same sensation he gets when, like, a spirit passes through him attempting to commune in, in some kind of way? And then he immediately recognizes, right, after a moment, he susses out that, no, it's, it's something, uh, almost like something was being pulled from him. Um, is that sensation, and he looks to Nathaniel and, and just kind of... Um, As you look at Nathaniel, directly behind him, you see something. An all 
black figure stands directly behind Nathaniel, but it's facing away from you and away from him. It's facing the wall opposite him. You can see that its hair is long and black and greasy. It looks like it's wearing traveler's clothes, but they're all completely washed of color. And it stands there, unmoving. And is there any shape of horns or, or anything to, no. to that effect? No. Um, a black figure behind Nathaniel, facing away, though. Facing away from him, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I, I think I would stand up and, again, kind of go for uh, just hand on the... the um, as you, a, on the rapier. As you stand, your perception moves a little bit. You notice the figure turns as if always facing directly away from you. All right. That is a strange thing. So I will... Um, as uh, this is happening, I'm going to interrupt you for a moment here. Uh, Cedric! Yep, absolutely. I'm going to... DM hand you a little bit and say that you went to take a drink of something. Perhaps coffee, perhaps ale, doesn't matter. As you went to take a drink, suddenly you feel a sharp pain. You take a point of slashing damage. And you look down, your thumb, the webbing between your thumb and your index finger, is now bleeding. That... Is there, like, on the cup, anything on the cup or that would have cut me, or...? No, it's a smooth glass. Uh... If it's coffee, actually, it's a very round wooden mug. Nothing about it looks sharp. Like it's and it uh, upon inspection is the, is what I'm drinking. What I thought I was drinking. It, it did I detect coffee. any like other types of roll investigation. Okay, that's pretty good. Cedric, describe to me what a 15 investigation looks like. How do you try and suss out this mug of coffee? Um, Cedric would kind of like see the cut on his hand and he'd inspect the glass first, obviously, and punting, obviously, being a cup or a, a wooden mm -hmm. cup. Um, he would probably pour, pour a little out on the table or the empty plate in front of him and start like pushing through it, seeing if there's any other particulate other than coffee bean in there please roll me a dexterity saving throw hmm. <laughs> this is going how do i get to where okay so if you open up how your do I character get to this... sheet yeah echo i'm here i just have to look for my phone really quick just to make sure julia's okay so i storming she's driving home click on attributes and then oh. on the left hand side you'll see all your abilities yeah. If you click on one of them, it'll prompt you a window that asks, what do you want? Ability check or saving yeah. throw. I gotcha. I see that. Damn it. Okay, this hurts. Um, you reach down to sift around the coffee. And as your finger gets close to the liquid, it's hot coffee, which, you know, you're a little careful. Um, but as your finger gets closer to it, before you can react... And Nathaniel and Jaro both see this. Suddenly, hundreds of these tiny, sharp tendrils reach up out of the coffee and slash along your wrist, hand, and fingertips, and you feel lacerations just crawl over your hand, and the flesh hurts. You take seven points of slashing damage. Jesus. Ah. Uh. Motherfucker! As it's trying to uh, claw at you, the table. you whip like, your like you pull, pull your hand away. Yeah, and as soon as you do, the tendrils retract, and the coffee looks still once again. What's the reaction from people around us? Is anybody noticing any of this yeah, going not on? Not really. Scratch. The tavern is pretty. It's not full of people. Uh, Scratch is busy. I'm going to say. Um, you called her over to speak to you, but she's, mm -hmm. she's for one Whipping thing, she's, she's shorter than the table is, so she yeah, can't yeah. really see what's going on. Huh. But when you stand up with we your hand on that? your rapier, 
But yeah, you saw that. When you stand up with your rapier, she says, What's your deal? Yeah, did you see I, that? So I, I I hadn't I hadn't drawn it, I had like put my hand on it, you know, so I but I could see where she saw me kind of making the motion like I was I was gonna um not nothing nothing i i'm fine i'm fine uh just uh startled a bit and i um and and i guess i turn and look is the is the figure still there no so i think jarl's looking around he's he looks to cedric and uh and the coffee mug and then looks at at uh nathaniel and says I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm not seeing. I need to go take those rooms down again. There was something about reflection. Um, I'm worried that these wards, and I'm just gonna... I can cast the tech magic at will. Mm -hmm. It's still a first level spell, though. Yeah. When I cast it, does anything happen? No. I look at the coffee cup. You don't see any magic. Look at his wounds. Cedric, are you all... Are you all right? He's bleeding. Take profusely. his hand. Does any, <laughs> Did you see that? Is anyone else getting grabbed by saw their that. drink? Are other people getting grabbed by their drinks and food and whatnot? As you look around, at first, not really. And then you see an individual on the far side of the room lifts up their mug. And as they take a drink from it, suddenly the mug is dropped and their head rolls off their shoulders onto the ground. All right, now the rapier is coming out. Okay, <laughs> I'd I'd stand. <clears throat> Kick okay. the chair. I'm gonna back. let go uh, of Cedric. Uh, back up and look back towards the door, um, and just run to try it. Doors open. Maybe, maybe we should get people out of here. Uh, All right, oh, people. Everything's gonna happen really fast. I am running to check the door. <laughs> There's right, a lot right, going yeah. on. Right. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Okay. You're running to check the door. The door appears to be unlocked. You can open it. Jaro. I open it. Is that guy still standing out there? No. Uh, you look but for him. the post him. is in. Right. The post is all yep. the way flush, flat with the ground. You look around. That is you what I'm doing. You see him way off to the left. He's walking to the north side of town. It looks like he's trying to leave. Got it. Got it. Um, Jaro uh, looks, took a quick look at, at um, Cedric. I, I guess I I know we're not in initiative or whatever, but how, how out of character? How are you doing on on your hit points, Chris? Um, the food I had helped a lot uh, before it started attacking me. Um, he's doing okay, he's so, doing all right. All right, so you haven't exhausted like your temporary hit points or anything at this not point? Not completely. No. Okay. Okay. Great. So then, um, I think he Jaro would. Um, uh, pull out his his rapier and say, "All right, people, it's time to be moving. You need to get your uh, get out of here." Uh, the you you find as you call that out, it is unnecessary. As right. other patron goers have seen someone die, and they are right. screaming and beginning the process of fleeing. And Scratch is screeching, "Don't forget to leave your payments on the table, everyone out!" <laughs> and she's like yelling at everyone to right. bail. As right. everyone is leaving, uh, a lot of the patrons get out the door. And Nathaniel, I need to know: Are you letting them pass you, or are you outside? Um, I know you're muted. When you get back, I'm going to ask you to answer that question. In the meantime, no, Cedric I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I will like push the door open to look for that guy. My first reaction to this is like I'm still holding the notebook. I am looking out at the coffee cup, amazed that these guys are also seeing these Eldritch Horrors that I see all the fucking time. And, like, processing that, looking down and being like, oh, we need to find out what that thing says right now. Because uh, if there's a real problem, I need to know what that magic does. And I am turning to run for the door when that guy gets his head cut off, and then I just book it further. So once I get to the door and I know it's open, I will hold it open as people start evacuating. Okay. Uh, fair enough. As that happens... Uh Cedric. But I'm like looking longingly at the post to try to, I want to run over and see it. Sure. <laughs> I'm we'll just holding it begrudgingly. We'll handle that in a yeah. moment. Cedric, you hear a scratch on the table, and you turn and you see that there is a black very slender long-fingered hand that has pushed its way up out of the plate that you filled with coffee, set it on the table, and then 
a all it looks like it's made of shadow this creature of all sharp edges and blackness pulls itself up onto the table is I need a dexterity save from both of you alright dexterity okay you're both successful as what you didn't see is on the counter behind you more of these entities are spilling out and up and over uh, as people are running out of the tavern, I'm going to move the map. Uh, hold on. As Scratch also runs out, this is the layout where you all are in the Dragon's Breath Inn. The door is open. Nathaniel is right by the door. And Nathaniel is like in the process of running out to look at the post. The two of you succeeded in your dexterity save, so you are not grappled and you do not take any damage. I need to know, are you staying to fight or are you running? Uh, I got a couple of questions before sure. I can... Yeah. So, first of all, as far as like... Because I have the ability with my with my immovable rod, I could get some height. Like, what is the situation of the ceiling? Is it rafters? Is it open? You know, is it an arch ceiling? I mean, those a, types of... This is a two-story inn. The ceiling above you is about okay. 12 feet high. There are okay. beams supporting the floor above above you. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and lighting is table lamps or chandeliers. I'm just trying to understand if there's a, if I needed to go high, am I, do I have things to do acrobatic type stunts off of or are we or is it pretty pretty standard there are lanterns on the tabletops and counters. okay all right i am i'm gonna stay uh but i am gonna move from where i'm at you know so i i will be fighting at least tr to try to provide cover for townsfolk that need to get out okay in that case cedric what are you doing yeah i Cedric's a protector. He would he would stay to try and help uh, cover the retreat, I guess. Okay. As people are getting. Oh man, around. this map looks familiar. If it works, don't break. Is this it. the face stealer map? Same in. Same in. Oh no! <laughs> Not the same. Uh, scenario, okay, so clarifying question: I had pictured that I was outside the door, holding it open like it opens out in a case sure. of a fire, and I'm like holding onto it, longingly looking at where that post was. Um, so I, from this position, do I see things crawling over the countertop? Yeah, like I'm looking into the. Oh, okay, so I'm I'm seeing this shit pop off. I see Yarrow and Cedric in there. Oh. Okay, I have a plus six in history. I'm a master of all written languages. I, sp I speak celestial. Can I remember it off the top of my head? I only got it once and I didn't write it down. The markings on the stake? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. we, we reflect, we protect, we live. Uh, and she said... Spellcasters, well, I that basically spells over a certain level will have problems in this area. Yeah, that's what she said. Well, fuck it. The tech magic's level one. It isn't a problem. I see this shit going down, and I'm gonna like, uh sigh, look back at the post, and just drop my notebook and step into the room. Um, okay, so you go back into the tavern. Uh, yeah. Okay. Immediately to your left. People a little bit slow to get up are like watching to see what happens. Looks as though they are almost shell shocked. Two of these, these people on the left. entities it. emerge yeah. on their table, and mm -hmm. it is a mincemeat of what's left of them. As these tendrils um, of sharp edges slash through. Them. Fuck. Okay. Uh, two clarifying questions. I've passed this boundary twice now. Do I feel the washing over sensation that Rob felt? No. And it, uh, so I feel no change when I step outside the tavern. Nothing None. to indicate to me that this goes away. Okay. You Understood. can roll a perception if you like, but I'm going to tell you, you will not feel it. Joe, Cedric, we need to go! 
How many people are left in the inn? Uh, after this table perished, some parts over uh, here. Scratch. Yeah. Scratch is the only one left. Where's Scratch? I don't see Scratch on the map. Uh, oh, I made her invisible. She's here. <laughs> I hate when I do that. Uh, that is where she is. She's watching all this happen, and she's just... Her hands are on her head, and she's... What the fuck? <laughs> if I toss an Eldritch Blast at one of these things... You know what? No, I am super cautious. This is not like a normal Dan character. I am hoping they don't notice me, and I'm shouting like kind of out the corner of my mouth. Cedric, yo, we need to leave. Grab Scratch. Let's go. Where, where is Scratch? I still don't see her. Right here. She's tiny. She's a small character, uh, as being a kobold. Uh, um, she has in her hands like a mug, and like a bit of a tip left on her left arm, and she's trying to run towards the door. Okay, I would try and if I see her running, she's got little, she got short little legs. Yeah, she's a kobold. Um, I would try and like cut her off, like meet her on the way to the door and and try and pick her up. Okay, scoop and recover the ball. Scoop, take her across the end zone. What's your movement speed per round? It is a great question. If you uh, look on your character sheet, you'll see in the top of it it says. Hit points, hit dice, oh, there armor class, is. movement. Yeah, 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay, let's see. Uh, you would reach her here. Uh, we can handle that in a moment, as we are about to roll initiative. Just for the sake of argument, you know, just no real pressing reason. Um, as this all is occurring, all of this is happening so fast and all at once. And as Jaro, you look around, you look up at the windows of the tavern. You can see the city out beyond it. You see people are suddenly beginning to move a little bit faster, but then your eyes focus on what's closer. And you see pouring out of the windows are more of these entities. One. Pouring out. Out, Two, like, heading... Three. Like, pouting outside of the... I'm sorry, when it you say pouring out... It looks as though like, they're falling out of the window into the tavern. Into the town? Okay. The tavern. Into the tavern. Where, where oh, you yeah. are. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> Important. Yeah. That's what I was trying to... Was, were they coming in or going out? So, all Seven right, continuing. of them One. collapse out of the window okay. into the room that you're in. Many gotcha. of them fall All in right. strange ways, unnatural ways that people wouldn't really stumble, right. and it's a little disconcerting. You, with your unique feature of communing with the dead, with every one that suddenly emerges, you hear, no, it's going to help, no, no, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, just pouring into your mind. I need a wisdom right. save. Absolutely. Love wisdom saves. I, there's been a lot of them. I didn't, you know, it wasn't planned. No, that's great. <laughs> I'm all for it. I, I love rolling nines or sevens. Okay. You are frightened. You're not frightened of them. You, So you do not have a target upon which you cannot approach, but your attacks are at disadvantage because you are scared. Sure. Yeah. So. I'm trying to assign a status effect, but I'm not sure. Oh, I got that. you. Don't worry. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I need everybody to please roll me initiative. Woohoo. Hey. Dang, dang, look at us. Nice. That's pretty good. Let me tell you, going before the monsters is good. But not all of them. Yeah, I'm like genuinely debating on if I want to spend my inspiration on my initiative. What are you talking about? You're outside the tavern. You're fine. Probably. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's... that's, uh, You'll be fine. Sounds pretty bad. What's the worst that'll happen? Uh, Jaro the yeah. entity on the table next to you surges forward with unnatural quickness and as it slams onto the ground it sounds heavy as it hits the floor 
and it lurches towards you with its claws, and it's going to take a swipe at you. These long tendrils that seem to bite into your flesh through your armor. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. Oof. 16 armor class, so I'm hit. I need a constitution saving throw, please. Absolutely. Not good. Seven. No, sir, that's really not good at all. Uh, you take... You need to get on your horse, homeboy. You take 11 points of necrotic damage, and your maximum hit points oh. are reduced by that amount. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Alright, so 11, 11 points. So there goes my temporary ones. So I guess I'm down to... If my max can... So the temp... Right, you guys are going to have to edge... edge. The temporary hit points acts as a buffer, even from the max hit point damage. So you only lose one hit point from your total. Okay. But my max also goes down by still one. by 11? By one. Oh, because by one. the temp HP okay. was a buffer. You only took one point of damage. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, Scratch. Okay. Give us one round to get out of here. Come on. She rolled really good on her cooking. That, that <laughs> was one shadow, though. One, just one, yeah. Uh, Jaro, it's now your turn. Yeah, so... Sorry, I'm trying to get my hit points back to where they need to be. I, uh, I, so I, I'm gonna be, like, taking off. That was a massive hit, and I'm frightened. So, mm -hmm. um... I guess the question I would have for Chris is like, since I'm moving ahead of you, if I were to intercept um, Scratch, is that gonna bother you? Oh, no, you're faster. Uh, that right. kind of would make sense. Okay, so then I will start hauling ass with on an intercept course for, uh, for Scratch, and I'm also gonna use my cunning action then to dash. Okay. So... I will hopefully pick up Scratch on the way and head towards Nathaniel. Okay, so you you can pick up objects as a free action. And in this case, Scratch is not resisting because she wants to get out. Um, right. So you're going to use your movement action and bonus action to dash. Right. So you're just... I you think move, we've, what's your movement speed? 35. I, I got 30, but then I'm dashing, so 60. Plus your bonus action dash, so 90. 90, right. So I there's no nothing that should be able to keep me... Uh, well, uh, well, you uh, will get slapped in the back of the head. Right, right. These things happen. Uh, oh, you know what? Damn it, that's right. Let me... let me. I can disengage you and can. then move 60. So you that's can. what I'll do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wise. So... Uh, you keep your rapier up to guard yourself as you sprint away. Yep. The specter cannot get a hit on you as you run. You gather up Scratch. Uh, there's a moment where she looks at you and she's like, what are you, serious? And then she's like, whatever, let's go, go! <laughs> All right. Uh, it's kind of like Scoop. Uh, yeah. Um, now Scratch is a small scoop character. And score, scoop and score. Uh, what's your strength score? Strength score is, is it more than eight. Uh, fourteen. It's uh, fourteen. You fucking yeah, you can carry a, a kobold. Um, yeah. So you pick up scratch and you run. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and move your token to where you'd be at the end of your run, which I think you have 34, I, 30 more feet of movement. Right. I mean, yeah. So let me see. Whoop. Sorry. Trying to deselect. What the hell? <laughs> So if you click and measure, you can then hit spacebar, and your character will move to where it was you measured to. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And nice. Scratch, moving with you, is here. All right. You might need another turn to get out of dodge. Yeah, since I had to do that <laughs> disengage, that... Cedric. Took care of it. Okay. You're up. Um, Cedric is following... Uh, is following uh, Jaro, okay. so he would use his movement to get to here. Okay. As you get there, you see there are two shadowy entities on this table as well, and their attention yeah. is on your allies. 
you're pretty sure they are going to do something about that on their turn. Um, holding my quarter staff, can I ready uh, Shillelagh to try and uh, kind of deflect one of them? Uh, so you can use Shillelagh to smack one of them. Um, however, your allies are closer to them than you are, so it's likely yeah. they are going to get hit first. Here we go, Cedric. Yeah, I'm... I, Dramatic I, I, moment. <laughs> Don't know if we have cards yeah, to hold is, on to for later. This is yeah. This is what we're doing. We're gonna. I don't entirely know how this whole I, Cedric didn't notice the the wash of water or whatever as a stake, and he doesn't really know much about runes. So he would he would uh, seeing the entities in between the his friend and he he would cast Shield of Faith on. Yarrow. Okay. So Yar Jarrow, your AC oh, is increased Jaro. by two. Alright. Make a note of that. Okay. What that does like what does Shield of Faith look like from you, Cedric? Um Yeah, so Shield of Faith, it You see you see Cedric kind of grasp the amulet around his neck and Jaro, it's almost like you're out in the in the snow and you feel like a cold breeze. <laughs> brush right. across the top and it's, it sends like a, a shiver down your spine and then you just kind of from that kind of like wake up a little bit nice okay you are shield of faith faithed whatever uh, I believe that's your turn although shield of faith is a bonus action you still have an action oh, if you'd yeah. like to use it Cedric so many options so yeah I know time. Christ I think I would ready. Oh, the. Even if it's bonus action, action, you can't cast two spells in the same. You I've can, played spellcaster in a while. You can cast a cantrip in the same spell that you cast a level oh. spell. So yeah, Thorn then I would spare the dying Shillelagh, Mold Earth, Guidance, Light. Yeah, then I, all available. Shillelagh is actually I, bonus I, action. I, you can't do Shillelagh. Oh right, Shillelagh is also a bonus action, so you can't use that one. But you can use any of the other ones. Okay. <laughs> Are you out of movement already? Would... Yeah, he's at 30 feet. I'm out of movement. Um... Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. I would... I guess about face and just ready a, ready a swing of the quarter staff. Can I, these I'm going to point actors. something out to you that the character will be aware of that you might not be. The ground that you're standing on is stone. Mold Earth works on stone. Okay. That's, yeah. Then we will do that. We'll pull up a five-foot wall of Earth in between myself and this horde of specters. Okay. Good call. Okay. So like uh like this? Yeah. Okay. Let me uh similar to the earth benders. Sure. Yeah. That works for me. Sure. Okay. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to uh actually make that look like stone, but it is there. You concentrate and just a wall of stone. Pretty thin, but there. Hopefully to give you some cover. And I'll say that anything attacking you on the other side of that is attacking over half cover. Alright. Next. Scratch's turn. Scratch is in your arms, Jaro. Um, what does Scratch do? <laughs> uh, Scratch 
looks at the entities that killed one of her patrons, and from your arms, she reaches down and draws a hand axe and just yeah, and throws it at them. The specter is hit by a 25. Ooh, Damn. I rolled a 19. <laughs> uh, and it takes some damage. You watch as this hand axe bites into the creature, and it's bizarre. The blade of the hand axe seems to almost like sink into their form until it hits something solid. And you see that that blade and part of the haft is swallowed by the shadow that composes this entity. But the hand axe stays where it hits them. And you just see the specter... You just hear this horrible, gut-wrenching noise coming from it. And as that happens, in your arms, Scratch says, I don't like that! Uh, it's now some of their turns. <laughs> this one is going to move... Yeah. Here. This one's going okay. to move All right. to here. This one's going to move here. Yes, sir? Do you have an idea? Inspiration? No, no, maybe? no, no. I'm just... This is a bigger map than I feared. That I makes me feel better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this one's going to move here and attack you, Jaro. Yep. Well, you can't win them all. You have an AC of 18? I do. It rolled a 7. Uh, Scratch is in your space. I'm just keeping her visible here. Uh, you right. are a carried item, so the specters are going to focus you. I hope that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, that is a 17 to hit you. Oof. Look at that. <laughs> Shield I of think, Faith I mean, visually alive. what we're seeing in the camera is he's probably, like, you know, planting that rod and, like, using it to spin and, and flip and, and like, like kind of yeah. keeping a hold of uh, Scratch. Sure, all the while that's happening, Scratch. this way and that way. Ah! Just right, <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'll ducking and weaving, duck and uh, weave. That is all of those Spectre's turns. Uh, no hits. Be grateful. Nathaniel. Yes. Fuck. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's come to you. I'm just going to start blasting, I think. Uh, I'm going to put Hex on this one. Okay. And then I'll just blast it. feels good. That'll do. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the one that had the hand axe buried in it. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Uh, plus X. Just another point. <laughs> oh, it's necrotic. I'm afraid that your hex does not seem to do as much as you would like it to. And by that I mean it doesn't seem to do anything with a one. Um... You see, like, the curse energy wrap up around this entity, and it just, it's like there's nothing to grab onto. The tendrils yeah. reach for nothing. But it doesn't matter because the Eldritch Blast <laughs> slams into the specter, and it, <laughs> it vanishes in a cloud of shadowy ash and mist. God. Damn it! Yeah, that I mean, this whole hex thing is like writing senses about people, so it doesn't even it doesn't even get there. It doesn't start. <laughs> As that happens, I need you to make a charisma save. Fuck. <laughs> oh, okay, wait. No, I think I got. You're pretty one. good at those. I think. Yeah, I feel good about that. Shouldn't have said that, but <clears throat> whatever. Nineteen. That's pretty good. You succeed. You hear in the back of your head. You were the first to kill, and so you shall be the first I maim. And you take a point of corruption. Yeah. 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 Even though I pass. Oh, oh, is 19 out of pass. That's frustrating. No, uh, you succeeded. Uh-huh. It could have been way worse. In my mind, I'm just, <laughs> like, mentally rolling my eyes. Just another fucking voice up in the, in the, in the, yeah, you <laughs> in hear, the toolbox. You hear, get in line. It's crowded up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, so bonus action, action. That guy's dead. Next turn, I'll float the hex onto another one. But I am going to... Uh, 
Can I, like, you know, kick one of these chairs in the way as a free action to keep this door open and just back up a little bit? You suspect the door will stay open just by the way it works. I leave it open and I just back up a little bit. Okay, sure. You do that. Uh, roll me perception. Oh. Fifteen. You notice two things. Firstly, the people that got out of the tavern are running into the center of the plaza. Away from mm -hmm. behind you. The other thing you notice mm -hmm. is that you see these entities spilling into the tavern. They're not spilling out. They're only coming out of the windows into the tavern. Mm. Okay, so... We need to get out! Out! Uh, Scratch, is there anyone else inside? That's going to be the end of my turn, though, for sure. Uh, you hear, Somebody is fucked upstairs! <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I hear. think they might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's now the rest of their turns. This one is going to move... Here. Cedric. And well, it's going hello. to attack you. What is your AC? 13. Oh, my friend, that's not very good. No. But it doesn't matter, because I rolled a 6. Alright. Hey. I Let's get go. used to keep those numbers it. on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this one moves here and is going to swing at you. Lashing out at you with his tendrils. Uh, before I get into any detail, I will wait to see what I roll. I'm glad I did, because I rolled a 10 total. Uh... This one's going to move here. Uh, it's fighting you over the half cover. Which means you have plus two to your AC. Okay, that's a natural 18. That totally hit you. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. This one, the tendrils will reach over the mold earth. Its hands extending unnaturally as if the shadows are of tentacles that are cutting into your skin. As it does, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. That is a failure. You take 11 points of necrotic damage, and your maximum hit points are reduced by that much. Uh, subtracting the amount you have of temporary hit points. Oh. So how much do you have in temp right now? Two. Okay, so you take nine points of damage, and your maximum hit points are reduced by nine. Okay. What this looks oh, like... Oh, I love that. What this looks like for everyone else is as these tendrils cut into Cedric, you see they don't leave wounds, but Cedric suddenly looks grayer, gaunter, tired, as if it's taking away from who he is. This one moves here and is also going to attack you. And it rolled a natural four. Don't worry about it. This one will move here. Run out of movement. This one will move here. Run out of movement. And this one's here. That is their turn. Uh, back to the top. This The other specters are moving. This one is going to move here. This one closes the gap. Jaro, this one's attacking you. Yep, 18 armor class. See how it does. That's a natural five. Mm. Don't worry about it. You see why I need so many monsters? <laughs> uh, this one moves here. It's not actually occupying the same spaces as Randall, yep. but it's going to attack you. Thirteen to hit. Okay. This one moves here and is going to attack Oof. you. You are surrounded. Uh, okay. That's a 23 to hit. I need a concept. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. Uh, you guys. Alright. Uh, so I think I'm going to. 
use some inspiration. Okay. You gonna reroll the con save or reroll my attack? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know what? Let's reroll your attack. Okay. I see you're counting against me. It's a 14 to hit. So that's a miss. Yep. All right. So that is their turn, or at least of those entities. Jaro, it's now your turn. You are getting lashed at, slashed at from yeah. all sides by these shadowy entities. What do you do? As this happening, Scratch is just, ah, just screeching as she right, wants right, out of right. the situation. Okay, so if I move at all, how many attacks of opportunity am I? In? If you I'm, do not like disengage, I'm three. You'll, get, you'll get four. That sucks. I would, um, I would recommend disengaging. <laughs> yeah, I... I we professionally call it bad move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the industry. Right. All right. Okay. So... Unless you have a trick I, guess I, I have know, to, Well, this is what I'm trying to, to debate. Oh, so I, I have... So cunning, cunning action just gives me a... You can disengage. Dash, as a disengage... Bonus right as a bonus action but then Instead i can't of an action right but then i can't use my face step because that's also a bonus action you could oh. action disengage and then face down you also don't yeah. need to they're probably not going to provoke opportunity attacks on a teleport though all right so what i'll do is i'll use my action to disengage okay i am going to move towards cedric okay and as i'm and this is, I guess, where... Can I do this as I'm passing by with my face step as an Eladrin sprint... As a spring Eladrin, I can actually use my face step to teleport him yeah, 30 feet that. away. All right, so it as I pass by... It has to be by, a location you can see. Nice. Yeah. So as I'm... As I pa basically, as I pass by over here, I, I reach out um, to uh, Cedric... Uh, and basically rip open the veil, grab him, pull him through that, and then continue the rest of my movement out the... Where are you teleporting, Cedric? Door. 30 feet out the door, basically down here somewhere. Okay, I'll plop you here. Right. So, Cedric, what you saw as you were facing the, the mold earth wall is right here, and just a yeah. wall of black tendrils are... <gasps> over it at you and then suddenly it's like you're pulled through a tunnel just vanishing around you and whoop, you're outside mm. and am I up now hey it is your turn yes <laughs> that was pretty cool <laughs> what the hell oh <laughs> uh, all right so I'm assuming I notice also that the specters aren't coming out towards us, or you take a I look would... and you see there aren't any specters on this side of the door. That's that's great news, guys. That's really great news. <laughs> um, I don't like how he chose a different way to phrase that than you did. I know, I know. You said they're not coming out. He said you look outside. There aren't any on this side of the door right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess... appreciate Jar not running past me. That's. Happy to stand behind somebody. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Just tr trying to figure out, is there a way for me to um, mark that I use this face step? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, if you see on your character sheet, there is a resources. You see what I'm talking about? I see features... I do not see resources. Okay, so... Oh, I see. Uh, Foundry, you have too many features for Foundry to recognize that this is one you can use. Um, so, I'm going to oh. ask you to keep a mental note of it. Okay, Typically, perfect. there are little checks you can mark. Uh, where you That's have, what I was looking for, yeah, yeah. yeah you have Chef's Special Food, Whales from the Grave, Chef Cook Treats. Those have taken up the slots that... A face step would be in another one. I like the order of those. Yeah. <laughs> Chef special food, whales of the grave, Chef special treats. <laughs> oh. 
I'm gay. Right. I um, have AIDS. I'm new in town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a push him. I'm a push him. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Anyway, I'm my fault for that derailment. Uh, Cedric, it's your move. You have action and bonus action. You are. The world is your oyster. You. It is. You have an open door in front of you, teeming with horrible shadow monsters. Yeah, I would. Uh... Um. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, within the door, I'm thinking like here. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right okay. there. We're going to go ahead and cast a... <laughs> double check the distances. Uh, I'd like to cast Entangle around the door. Maybe call it right here. So, like, it would encapsulate just inside the door. How big is Entangle? It, it says it's a 20-foot square. Okay, that's really big. So that's, like... Yes. They would. Yeah, I'm trying to cover a retreat. That's fine. Uh, in case they can. You are aware this is concentration, I believe, and so Shield of Faith would fall away. Yeah. Okay, just making sure yeah. that you know this. I gotcha. Okay. Okay, you cast Entangle. Let's see. Not. What does your Entangle look like? Can I, like, flavor it a little different? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Okay, so... We're playing pretend together. Let's see what you got. Uh... Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with the... That's kind of cool. It's my <laughs> first, I've never used the, the forge in all of its majesty, but... Yeah, there's cool shit in here. Yeah, um... So entangle it, you kind of see like an it, it, it's almost like a prairie, like kind of like grass sprouts up from between these rocks right inside the door, and then it seems like a cool breeze fall, like flies over them, and they all kind of like crack and ridge and freeze over as they just kind of turn into these like hooked claws of dead grass. Okay. Fuck yeah. That's fucking sick. <laughs> it's fucking sick. Nice. <laughs> All right, that's a little aggressive for what I was going for, but it'll do. <laughs> I like oh, it. Oh, board. Nice color, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the, I, here's the problem. I just made the opacity like super opaque, so I couldn't work with it. Okay. That's pretty great. That's your entangle. So, all of these entities that are suddenly trapped in it. What's the saving throw? Strength? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, turns out weird ghostly specter things don't have much strength. Your DC is a 14. Um, yeah. They have to natural 19 to save this. <laughs> I'm curious about how their focus shifts too. Like, did they look when I blew up one of their home, one of their buddies? Are they looking to Chris now when he casts this? You can't tell. They don't really have faces. Yeah. What do they appear roll, focused on? You can roll an insight for me. Oh, great. Well, um, the, the first one was in negative that. three. I'm sorry, hold on, let me roll these saves. Be a moment. This foundry catches up, because there's a lot of saves I just rolled. Mm -hmm. One succeeded. Two succeeded. Yes, two succeeded. And that's it. Okay, so the rest of them are ensnared. Uh, sure. You watch as these sharp, dead grass hooks bite into the tendrils of these entities. And many of them are just, like, surging towards the door but can't really move. Two of them manage to just pull themselves free. As my sister attempts to uh, retrieve a cat. I'm sorry. Breath. <laughs> Dance is high. It's fine. Let her run around. Alright. 
Uh, Cedric, anything else on your turn? No, I'm kind of I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, yeah the rest of the party to okay catch up. Scratch. Uh, Went for the metaphorical other foot. <laughs> Scratch in your hands says, "This might be a bad time, but you smell nice." Uh, she doesn't have any actions she wants to do. She's going to hold an action to attack. Uh, all of these specters are currently entangled. They will get another save at the end of their turn. Uh, except for these. Well, they can't move through this. Okay, hold on. They're still stuck. That's what happens when you, in when you make strength saving throws for monsters that have a strength of one. Uh... Nathaniel, it's your turn. Hmm, okay. I'm feeling good because Cedric bound those guys up. I'm going to, like, breathe a sigh of relaxation when the specters get hooked on the grass and they do stop. <clears throat> so I watch them roll through these windows, right? These physical boundaries. They just float through walls and shit. Have you seen them do that? I'm asking. No. Oh. Oh, that's way more concerning. <laughs> They're in the, the the call is coming from inside the house. Um, I'm gonna take my turn to give a more than cursory look around at everything else. I'm gonna trust that Jaro is in front of me. I'm gonna trust that Cedric has bound up most of these guys. I want to take a moment to look at the big picture and like legend lore on Malachor Nosfedonia, pillar in Celestial. Do, do I recognize what these creatures are? They're coming in and out of the windows. Are the townspeople who are into the village square getting murdered by something else? Are they fine? It's still like the middle of the day, right? I get that it's always gray and time war, but it's roll morning, me. right? So you are rolling. You're basically searching. You're trying to find information right now. Please. Yeah, I am. I'm like, I, what the fuck is going on? A second I'd, ago, we were having coffee <laughs> and breakfast. I'd like you to choose to roll between perception or investigation. Oh, fuck. Yeah, fuck it. I'll spend it. I'll spend it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Nice. Let's Roll. spice up tonight. Roll again. 16 plus 4. 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. You notice a few... Hey, can, you know what? I could even give myself guidance, but I'll take the dirty 20. You you can't, because you're using your action to search. Um, True. Uh, well... You notice well, some things that are concerning. You look around. The first thing you notice is from the temple on the far side of the plaza, you see a man in armor with children under his arms. He is sprinting towards the edge of town. The next thing you notice is that around the edges of town, this circular plaza that is Timor, you see... You look down the street, you can see the ground all the way out of town, out to the hills that lead away, only you can't anymore. Because at the edge of town, there is, it's like a shadow darkness that is climbing. And at this point, from here, yep. it looks maybe 17 or 18 feet high, and it is getting higher. With a 20, you also notice, you look up. You expect to see, you know, cloud-ridden skies and the twin suns peering up from behind them. You do see them, but you also see above the plaza, right in the middle, there is a single black circle, and it is growing wider. You said it's 18 feet tall? The wall the that seems to be surrounding yeah, yeah, yeah. the perimeter of the town, yeah. I'm getting a mental image of a, a dark sphere closing in around... The town. There's a little pinhole at the top, and there's a wall coming up on the outside in this big semi dome. The pinhole at the top is darkness. The wall growing is darkness, but you can still see skylight. Out yeah, in I got you. The two. And uh, the guy with the two kids under his arms is running towards the wall. Yeah, he's sprinting full sprint. Uh, you can and he came just out of at a glance. A yeah, he came out from the temple across the plaza from you. It's a temple of a na. You know that to be a temple of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Pure. Center half 
Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot about her. Yes. <laughs> purity and fire, basically. What that shit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Purity and fire. Fuck, that guy is going to be good to have on our team. He's going to run into that wall and turn around and figure out, hopefully, that he's fucked, because I assume we're stuck. Uh, okay, 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 okay. And this is literally what Nathaniel's doing. He's, like, putting his hand on his forehead and kind of turning around in a circle trying to put things together. Uh, I think we might be stuck here. And I'm going to use my bonus action to move Hex onto one of the restrained ones. And just, like, I'm going to default to... Spending my action to start picking people off like ducks in a gallery while we are trying to puzzle this puzzle this out. But that'll be the end of my turn. So action to investigate. I'm going to take maybe like two steps back. Is this like a, a, and a deck above me that I'm leaning up against? Of? Yeah, it's like a post that holds like, up the balcony. Put my back to that just so nothing comes up. With a 20 in investigation, you realize the windows on the front of the tavern and as you step back it really clicks for you you're stepping into sunlight we reflect we protect we live i'll say it out loud and i'll like take a step closer to the windows click on my detect magic vision do i see any connection between the windows and the specters no. You don't see any magic at all. Except for that stake. Hmm. They're not reflecting sunlight? That's I'm sorry? Said. They're not reflecting sunlight? I don't understand your question. What was the detail about the windows that you mentioned? Is that they're yeah. not reflecting? So you see that the facade of the tavern and yeah. where you are now standing is in sunlight. Yeah. But not the windows. Not the ones in front of you, beneath this balcony. The balcony is confused. casting... Ah, 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 okay. It's... <laughs> Uh, I think probably on a six second initiative, I am standing in front of this window, going back and forth out from under the deck, looking up at the d the dark window, if I'm picking up on the, or, sorry, the sunlit window and the dark window. Sure. You see that the sunlit window, there's nothing. The darkened window on the other side it is, they're just specters and shadows and monsters all over it. Right. Yeah, but I think I'm spending my turn figuring. There's something about these windows. They reflect the celestial rune in front. It's a, it's it's some part of the spell. Should we retrieve so it? Jaro, so Jaro is just like, should we break the glass? No, I think this. Uh, maybe we need to shine light on it. Oh, well. look here, and I'll like take them over to look at what I'm looking at. This one, right? It's dark. It's protected from the sunlight, and you can see through it, obviously, right? And the ones that are out in light are like a sheet of glass, or a sheet of silver, basically. They're, no, like, you can still see through them. It's just shining. Do I see specters through them? No. It's still a functioning window. It's just in sunlight. Okay. Am I drawing too much into this? Is this I just? Think... I thought you were looking for like a magical cue here that the reflect thing was related to the windows, or you're saying they're just reflecting the sunlight? They're just like anime glasses, shiny. <laughs> Nothing to do with anime glasses. I'm going to say that immediately. Right. Sure. I'm going to tell you that you have. Yeah connected that the windows in sunlight do not have s these specters pouring out of them. Right. Yes. We need to put light... Yeah. I think we might need to break this patio is what Nathaniel's coming to the conclusion. When you say break the window, I'm going back and forth trying to put this together and I'm like reach forth and 
Okay, not we have live. this turn has been forever. forever. On the window. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I kept trying to end it as like where I'm drawing this inferences of walking back and forth. That's what he's okay. trying to put together. So that's what you spend your turn doing. You're sussing this out. Uh, we now turn back to the enemy's turn. Uh, they are going to try and surge forward. Uh, this one's saved. So it is going to emerge. Ah, fudge! As it comes out the window. Or the door. Uh, look, like three of them saved total, okay? It's doing great. That's, uh, that's plenty enough to kill me, man. It's fair. <laughs> Jaro. Uh, you got the cobalt. A nine does not hit you, I'm afraid. No, it does not. <laughs> uh, the next one is snared. This one is snared. This one manages and emerges. And it's yes. going to attack you. Absolutely. That is a 20 to hit you. That'll do it. You take... Constitution. Constitution. I, need a, I do need a con save, yes. No. The DC for this con save, by the way, everyone, is 10. That's a four. You have to uh, tell me that. You take... Oh. No one has succeeded so far on this DC 10 con God save. Deal. You take eight points of necrotic damage, and your maximum yep. points are reduced by eight. Yep. You feel so drained and weary as it slashes into you. It's just your joints ache. Your breathing is heavy and slow. It is awful. That's their turn. The rest are all snared. Uh, Charo, it's your turn. <clears throat> yeah, great. Um, okay, well, <laughs> we're going to disengage um, and move, and then I'm trying to think. You know what? Um, they do seem to be affected by physical weapons, at least. So I will... There's like no great way... Alright, so disengage and then um, move 30 feet. Like, uh... And then as I'm running back that direction, I unsling my bow um, and and shoot okay, at uh, this one. Okay, roll your attack. You are still... Yeah. No, uh, roll me three wisdom saves. Three wisdom saves. Because right. I've been forgetting to have you roll against the Frighten this whole time. Oh, that's right. Yep, all right, so first one... Saving throw. That's an 11. The second that's one. That's a failure. <laughs> one more. You got this. Yep. That's success. You are no longer. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. Good timing, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's your first attack you're rolling, and you're not frightened for it. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I assume I can do that from inventory, right? Yep. You just click on your bow, and then it'll pop up in the chat bubble. You hit attack, and then damage. That hits. 22. All right, great. You're aiming for the left one, you said? Yep. Okay. Six. Six points of piercing damage. Yeah. The arrow seems to strike true. It doesn't seem to be no. lessened in any way. As it punches into the mass of this creature, and it doesn't like it. What else in your turn? You still have a bonus action, I believe. Oh. You're right, I do, don't I? Um, oh, you disengaged. Yeah, I already disengaged. Oh, then no, you didn't. Uh, uh, Sorry. You're yeah. all done. Yep. Cedric, you are concentrating on this entangle, which seems to be holding the monsters at bay. What do you do? Um, I want to try something. I can't wait. Um. So you said that the light is shining on the windows on the second story of the balcony? They are. So I'm assuming... Okay, I drew a picture because I knew I was going to do a shit job explaining this. So there's Jaro fighting a specter. He had moved since uh -huh. then. The sun is shining at my back. I'm assuming the sun is going to create some angle 
of light under yes. the balcony. Yes, it is. Okay. That being said, I would like to use Thorn Whip to drag one of these specters 10 feet, hoping that that is enough to get them into the sunlight. So you're performing an experiment. We're testing shit out. Roll me We're a spell attack for Thorn Whip. Okay. Damn it. That does not hit, I'm afraid. Uh, their AC is 12. The 9 is just shy. Um, I do to buff that. You could roll an inspiration to re-roll it if you like. Stolen car, uh, right, Dan? I think we might want to hold on to it, buddy. <sighs> oh, I don't know. I mean, I blew mine on an investigation roll, so... No, I know. <laughs> I think stolen car is not a bad idea, but we need to like we need to commit to the stolen car bet. Then we need to we need to get this get this oh, done. Trying to cast thorn whip, I'm I'm distracted. Trying to put this plan together and making my drawing, I'll back up, assuming that they're going to step out into the sunlight on their next turn. Okay, sure. So I'll I'll back up another fifteen feet or whatever. Okay, you do so. That seems very fitting for the moment. Uh, Scratch uh, is not where I left her. She's here. Um, she's going to hop out of your arms, basically, because she's a strong woman who don't need no man. And she is going to look at what all the rest of you are doing. Uh, she is going to look at you, Cedric. What are we doing? Give me something. My tavern's hey, fucked. <laughs> You're muted, buddy. Um This is this is your tavern. What what are these? What is this? What I don't know! <laughs> this wasn't in the manual! Just get back, little one. You call me that again, I'm gonna fucking gut you. And she does uh, <laughs> back away. Uh, she holds an action to attack. Uh, it's now the Spectre's turn. Uh, this one surges until it stops. As does this one, just at the edge of the sunlight. They do not cross into it. Uh, I have to roll a bunch of strength saves, so please hold. Shit. That's a lot of failures. Okay, none of them get out. Nathaniel. Uh, he's gonna do that, look around, say fuck, look at the other two and say, I, I think the magic is connected to the light. It's, and he points to the two specters who won't come out, and then will direct their attention to what he saw. The knight running away, the rising walls, the pinhole at the top. Have they grown in the last 12 seconds? Not really. Six seconds? Not really. Um, it's all gonna be night here soon, and then I'm a little more worried about whatever you saw over the forest showing up. We need, either need to make daylight or and I'm gonna see, do I still see that knight running out of, who ran out of the temple with his kids? He's or gone. With two kids? Did he make it out? He just went out of my vision? You could see the road he was running down. You no yeah. longer see him. Fuck. Um, maybe to the temple? We'll retreat back there? Uh, do I recognize these creatures? Now that you've had a minute to think about it, you can roll me an arcana check. The 14. I don't know what it'll do, but maybe the temple will provide us some protection. With a we 14, need to figure out if we're going to try to wait this out or deal with it directly. With the 14, you're pretty sure they are undead. You're not sure exactly what kind. They seem to be akin to shadows or specters. Maybe something of the kind. What you yeah. are pretty sure of is they're not from this plane. 
Yeah, and the necrotic didn't do anything to him, right? Correct. It had no effect. I'm taking a couple steps of my movement, and I'm going to get closer to them, and then, like, kind of, while keeping my eyes on the door, turn to look back at the temple. These, at least, are undead. Maybe we can find at least a little sanctuary, get what people we can. While the sun's still up. Jaro, listen, listen, listening to Nathaniel, Jaro does say to Scratch, did you say, did you say that the, that there were people still on the second floor? Yeah, they're fucked now. Probably. You're going in there? I, I mean, I, Jaro kind of looks at Nathaniel and Cedric like, there's, there's, Towns people up there. Nathaniel. I, I real quick, what's your mm -hmm. passive investigation? Not as good as it used to be. Okay. <laughs> no, what, when my... you are literally a fucking investigation it's, robot? Yeah. Uh where is my uh if you look at your investigation, it's, only a, four, it's a fourteen. It's a fourteen. I had it so, uh, made it. I made okay. It you, as you're walking away, you're walking over the stake that's pounded into the ground, and you notice something. The markings are different. I peer down. I'm like, I will use this as an opportunity to take myself away from that conversation. Like, as Jaro is looking for me to make a comment, I will bury myself in esoterica. It's still in celestial. But it's almost like a, a mocking font of Celestial. Yeah. Son of a bitch. It says, I have to say that out loud as I peer down to look at the new runes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Cedric would be kind of trying to talk Jaro away from it, saying away from potentially going back in there that uh, my friend, they're, they're their time has passed. There, there is likely no more of them left. I, I think Jaro's I'm looking all up. About going to check and survive. I'm get up there on that second floor where the sun is. But look, if you go in there, just don't expect me to come in there and get you back out. That's all I can say. Jaro kind of shoots you a nasty look. I'm looking at these runes. Don't you see me? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> They <laughs> well, you may not see me, but I see you. I see you. I see all of you into you, right? <laughs> um, I, I, I think, I think there's a, a point in which like Jaro just kind of looks at Cedric, like hands up, and just kind of backs towards the, the platform. I at least want to climb up, and take a look, in through because I assume that this overhang. Like, that I can at least start to see through some of the windows to see what's going on. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can do that. You don't even have to roll for that. Yeah. So I just want to check out to see, like, all right, I, I mean, is there, do I even see anyone alive through any Only of the windows? Check. And a you can give me save. these runes whatever you want. I'm, I'm sorry, that. perception what? A perception check and a charisma saving throw. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dan perception i don't notice a damn thing i'm proficient in it and i still don't notice a damn That's thing okay. and a charisma and a charisma saving throw yes you do see uh, something don't worry yeah <laughs> natural 20 nice all right that at least okay uh nathaniel yeah i'm here skin to bed you see the bad, dude. I think that's why you need to take charisma safe. It's 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 dark and dangerous in there. <laughs> With a consternation, consternating eye, you read the runes on the head of the stake, and they say, "As you gaze upon your reflection, I gaze back." You also notice. That the rune in the very center of the stake. Well, before it sang of conjuration. As if maybe to displace magic. Now it sings of conjuration. But not the same kind. 
It's a much more powerful conjuration rune. You can roll an arcana to try and figure out exactly what kind. That's really good. A 19. Uh, that's above the DC you needed based on the spell level. Uh, you recognize the rune basis for extra planar magic. Mm -hmm. Looking into that window with a very strong will, Jaro, you look through and the sunlight casts, you know, sunlight rays through the dust. But beyond that, you look into the dark hallways and as you look in, countless tiny eyes peer back at you from the corners of every shadow in that hallway. Uh, while I'm down here problem solving, not to split these scenes, I just picture alternating cameras of us mm -hmm. puzzling out these different things. I want to reach into my like uh, blazer, my coat jacket or whatever. I have a small pen knife. I just want to flick it out and kind of see if I can see the shadows in the reflection if I step into the light. I'm sorry, what do you mean? I want to use the reflective surface of this metal to see if there is any part of this spell or enchantment that seems to be related to reflection with the tools that I can puzzle out right now. Uh, okay. Romeo perception check. Thanks. Okay. I also need to know how you're climbing this, Jaro. Just an 11. How am I... Um, I assumed that as a rogue, I would be naturally adept at this? Are you looking to understand like what tools I might be using? No, I want to know like how handsy are you touching the wall here? Are you leaning up against it? Are you kind of hanging and looking in? Are you just free climbing? Um... I had, well, I had expected I was mostly free climbing, so we'll we'll go with that. I do think there's a, a good chance that when I would get positioned somewhere where I need to, that I would set the immovable rod and basically stand on it like a rung, right? Okay. Um, since, since I can do that. Roll me a dexterity um, save. I think sure. Cedric would be seeing that Jaro was running off, say, well, if you're going to just don't go in, I'll be, and be careful, and I'll stand under him. Trying to nice twenty four easy easy doesn't even yeah. need it Hell yeah. yeah you're standing you like have, foot. you have like one hand on the wall you're looking through the window right. you're standing comfortably you're you're balanced no problem right um as you look hold up this knife and look in the reflection you turn it and tilt it and look around you happen to turn the knife just enough that it's in its reflection it casts. You can see just the tops of the treetops outside of Timor, and you see the entity. You see the okay. monster's figure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look right at it. I want it. I want all the details. My whole character is braving Elder Torres for knowledge. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in that case, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you what you see. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, one moment, please. As I find the fucking got a thing. theory. The only thing that matches here with the, with with characteristic clues of blue horns and danger bad. I've got a, I've got an idea. Nightmare nightmare danger bad. I've got an idea, but I don't know. Yeah, That's I good. had I had the wrong idea earlier with the noble. So maybe not. I don't know. Okay, are you ready? I'm going bad. to paste this into the map so you can see it. Uh, <laughs> this is what you see. Go ahead and mouse over it. Get a good look. Oof. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, so it's really tall. Yeah, it's looming over the trees. And it is looking directly at you. And when you make eye contact through the knife, you see a horrible, pale blue, frozen smile split across its mouth. Well, and then 
You watch as it takes a step forward. I turn around and look. Do I see, like, trees breaking and shit like that, or just absolutely nothing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Pull the knife back up. And look again? Mm -hmm. He's He's moving. We might need to go inside. Is he on the side by the temple? Yeah. Nah, right? That'd be... <laughs> <laughs> He's far <laughs> beyond it, though. Uh, based on how far it is and how many uh, rolling hills you can see between him and you, you think he's maybe a mile away? Okay. 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 Um, I'm like, I've got this knife up. I'm like looking in it. Looking back on my shoulder, turning back, there's like the monsters in front of us. Roll me a dexterity saving throw. Cedric behind. A dexterity save? Yeah. Do yeah. it. 14. Suddenly, your your fingertips, where you're holding the knife, hurt terribly as you take two points of slashing damage from tendrils lashing out from the knife and just catching inside your hand on your palms. All right, I saw the thing. It's fucking moving out of the trees. We need to decide where we're going. Either we're killing these things and getting behind the windows and whatever the signal thing is, or we're making it for the temple, but we need to go. It's like a mile away, and I'm just going to drop the knife and kind of back away from it. And I'll take the two points of damage. Now that you have seen it with your own eyes, Nathaniel, you can roll an Arcana or a History check again. Crit. 26. A crit. Nice. There you go. You've nice. Heard, you've it's heard my best this. skill, too. That's as high as it could be. You've heard of this monster. They were famous for ravaging the Ceresian countryside for hundreds of years. They were rare, and when they did appear, they were almost unstoppable. Mm -hmm. It is a Nightwalker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean... You know... With a 26, Nightwalkers are famous for draining the life of everything in a huge radius around them. And anyone that they know of, they can reach out to psychically to mm -hmm. torment, attack. Uh, mm. You don't look very pleased with this information. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm also trying to communicate. This is like, Nathaniel's definitely a, a big facial, always consternated or frustrated or depressed or something like that and the, the, there's definitely that on him and he's like sucking on his fingers backing away from the night it's a night walker we need to get inside that temple it's undead maybe it'll provide us a measure of protection we need to get whatever town's people we can in there as soon as possible now i don't know what the sigil and all those protections are about but the best faith that i would say we have or my best guess we'll put our faith in honor I, I mean with a crit on this 20 do I feel like getting in the Temple of Flame and Purity is going to be good for avoiding the Undead Scourge? He, is he's inside the wall, too, by the way? The dome that's going up? No, he's beyond it. Way beyond it. Hmm. Uh, with a 26, uh, you know that a Nightwalker is a very powerful undead. Um, and the walls of a temple, while they might help likely would not hold back an undead of this nature. Um, Jaro, what are you doing while you're looking in this window and hearing all this? Well, I'm, a, I'm very disappointed in Nathaniel's reaction. I'm encouraged to, slightly by Cedric's reaction, but I'm like trying very to move as quickly as I can to just all I want to do is assess like are there, if is there anybody living that I can see and if there's not I will drop down and head back to uh, head back to my friends okay so you can't see I'm not going in there if I can't see any evidence that there's anybody sure in this save. hallway the doors to the rooms are shut you can't really see into the individual okay. rooms you would need to navigate so the rooms the are not so the rooms are not facing like there's not windows facing onto the street or, or anything like that N not from this window you're looking through if you get around okay. the side of the building you might be able to see into rooms this is the same okay. window that Cedric first looked out and saw the individual driving the stake at the top of the stairs okay okay let me see if I can understand can you point on the map where you're 
where you think I am? So you're here. You're looking into yep. the building uh, on the second yep. story window. Yep. If you can climb your way around to like this side of the structure, yep. you would be able to see into the actual rooms. Okay. Then that is what I am going to do. Okay. You don't have to roll me anything to climb. You're a rogue. You, you do this right. for a fucking living, and it's not raining or anything. Right. When you get in front of the first window, I need you to roll me acrobatics. Absolutely. Just to get a good look in a position that you can see into the room. Yep. 23. Nice. That's great. Uh, this room is empty. This room, okay. the bed looks made. No one was in here. Right. I need another acrobatics to get to the next room. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. This time, as you get to this room, you're like shimmying along, and as you get the immovable rod underneath the window and you step onto it, your right hand, you almost habitually you reach out and you touch the window. Mm -hmm. You're looking in. There is a lantern lit in this room. You see there is an individual in the room, but your hand, it doesn't touch like it's glass. Your fingertips almost pass through the window. And you feel a bizarre tingle. What do you do? Uh, well, I pull back my pull back my hand immediately and um, I'll take a, a, a closer look at the individual because I mean specters look like individuals as well and phantoms look like individuals sure, etc. Yeah. Et so uh, as you look in you see there is an, it looks like a human man he has uh, he looks terrified um, he's huddled up in the corner of the room there's a lantern lit next to him he has the door barricaded shut with a dresser in front of it um, he's just you see that he should be able to see you but he doesn't right. but he doesn't and the and this entire side of the building is in darkness is that what yeah uh, okay um, I also need you to roll me a d100 a d100 okay yeah. you can do that uh, from the dice tray at the yep bottom. got it yep just gotta roll it Okay. Nice, nice, As nice. you're looking into this window, where your hand pushed into the glass and passed through it, suddenly a black shadowy entity surges forward, its hands like clawing out of the window. Uh, right. It's about to attack you. What do you do? Uh, I will like step back and drop down, grabbing a hold. The basically, I'll step back, grab very, down, grab onto the very small uh, the immovable rod. Uh, I'm gonna make this um, attack a disadvantage because I like that. It's the first roll is a natural one. Uh, so what actually happens is this entity reaches towards you as you drop, and it just uh, like falls out of the window, and you hear it uh, onto the ground underneath you. Great. Look down. Is it still alive? Is it in sunlight now? Is it? It in has darkness? fallen into sunlight, which means you watch as it suddenly. It's like watching it sublimate, smoke, right. and ash. <laughs> up into the air right. and it's immediately gone uh, I'll kike myself up onto the onto the, the the thing stand back up is the glass real now or is it still kind of transparent or it seems to be the same as it was before okay. um, do you try to open the window I I do <laughs> okay you open the window All as right, you great. do the guy Hearing... inside the room looks up and says uh, uh, who are you? Come on! This way! This way! It's time! We need to get out of here! He doesn't argue. Uh, right. He runs towards you and looks down. Right. Hearing the commotion, uh, can, Ced can Cedric have ran over hearing the specter fall? Mm -hmm. As you I emerge around maybe... the corner, you would see it. <laughs> like turning into smoke. Okay. All right. And then I, I would probably pick up what Charles saying and here I'll, I, I will catch you and I'll offer to catch the guy if he right and then it's just like just okay. pulling me, him uh, pulling him out right. 
This dude does not require any convincing. He wants out of the structure. Right. <laughs> uh, DC was 10. It's a little clumsy. Uh, he right. oh, and slams into you. Uh, but right. you do succeed, so you don't take any damage. Okay, great. Um, all right, so then I, I guess I chuck him to, uh, chuck him to Cedric, and then, uh, you know, the other three if, rooms were I, your teams. Okay, great. Then I'll just kind of like sit down on the on the rod, kind of loop my legs around it, grab a hold it, pop it off as I kind of drop to the as I kind of flip down to the to the ground, land down by Cedric, and and say, I think that's it. Hi, right, that's good. Uh, Nathaniel seems to be onto something. We should go. Let's move. Figure out what's next. We'll, I think we'll we're falling into the right. shadow fell. You know, being pulled there by something. I guess I look up and say, as they're coming back, I'm going to like point at the walls, at the pinhole in right. the ceiling. Which is now like, expanded <clears throat> to a pretty <clears throat> size. Yeah, and then at the knife that's in the ground, everybody that's been attacked, the brooms on the thing, uh, they say, as you gaze upon your reflection, I gaze back. I, I, I think some ritual is bringing this place, time on, down to the Shadowfell. And as of right now, it's not complete yet, and so those creatures I gesture at the door and the windows that were like shining with light or transparent and then out at the night walker that I can only see through the knife and that he could only see in the window the coffee cups that we looked into right now those are the most permeable barriers and they're coming through there first I don't know if we can stop it I do know that there's a creature a night walker something of horrible terrible power that's approaching this place now it'll be here soon everybody wrong I guess something. the same time as this whole thing goes black we need to figure this out we need to figure it out quick I think the pillar might be the key or might be connected to it it was emitting conservation magic uh, summoning magic I Maybe Actually, we should just try to get it back to, out. Uh, I'm going to move you guys to the main map so you can kind of see the layout of the town. I think that'll be... What are we rolling? Uh, perception. Sixteen. I should bless it. The darkened walls that are climbing have grown tall enough that when Nathaniel points in the direction the Nightwalker is, all of you now see him. He is still... Through the wall... Oh, okay. Yeah, theory confirmed. Look, there he is. He is still we... a good distance away. You, He's not moving particularly quickly, or at least it doesn't seem to be that way. Um, but you also see, above you, in the darkening circle that's expanding, you see hints of movement, of flying creatures with horribly wide wings above you. Do we think that pulling the rod from the ground will be of, be of help? If you think you can do it, do it now, because I think getting a five foot long length of wood out of a cobblestone is going to be harder than you think it is. It, and I'm going to like ready it, Elder's Blast for if that, any of those winged creatures start swooping down towards us. Okay. And that hole is not, is it centered over the, over the it's like rod or over... It's like straight over the well in the middle of town. It's right over okay. everything and just is slowly expanding. I will kind of square my feet to the rod and I will cast Mold Earth to try and exhume a four foot block or a five foot block with the rod inside of it from the earth. Nothing happens. It's been like no, truly, like nothing happens. The nothing, just like goong -go -goong -go -goong 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 and shaking a stick at it. Yeah, basically, this, you feel the spell try and take effect, but no, yeah. there's nothing there for the weave to grab onto. Oh, yep. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I think we need to get inside. <laughs> 
Or, I don't know, I, I, there was a knight that ran away. He might be somebody we could have asked for information. Or maybe we could try to make it for the barrier to get out? It, does it look like we could even make the wall in time before it closes off? So the wall, the, the darkness, is like 30 feet high now. Yeah, yeah, see, we should have left earlier. <laughs> yeah, that was the problem. <laughs> so like, screw y'all, we're out of here. <laughs> we're, we're, Nathaniel we're woke here. up late, now we're stuck here. Great. Yeah. I'm going to like look so, up from where I'm still kind of like kneeling down by the post and look up at Jaru. Jaro. God damn it. <laughs> Jaro. I'm going to look up at Jaro. His name and, is... And uh, kind of like... Uh, I'm more of a devil and demon guy. I thought dead things were your domain. Any idea what's going on here? <laughs> you know, I, I I have a tendency to like talk to the dead, or, or I should say, the dead have a tendency to talk to me. But uh, in, in this particular case, no, I, I don't have a lot of idea about what's going on, though. Isn't isn't like magic and and, and mystery kind of your deal? Yeah, and I'm going to be honest, Eldritch is that I don't quite understand is kind of right, right in well, my... Well, right I mean, take, take take a moment then, Nathaniel. I mean, like, we, we have this thing buried in the ground. Somebody put it here, right? The, the, the man that was pounding on it. Do we know where he is? I'm going to turn to Scratch and, like, bend down towards her. And I think with, like, the gravity of the situation stepping in... And everything else, I will rely on the one persuasive technique that I am proficient in, which is intimidation. And I think just as he crouches down, kind of by scratch, there's a little bit of darkness that collects around him, kind of around the sword and on his back, and that gaunt, kind of almost skeletal figure. There's a little sharper, a little more angular. I just want to look down at Scratch, say, Scratch, it is very important that you tell me everything you know about that post about who put it in why it's there the curse that Vigo mentioned about spellcasters everything you can tell me about it I need to know and I need to know now <laughs> for all intimidation uh, I'll give you advantage <laughs> 21 <laughs> Uh, Scratch is like looking back and forth at your allies. She says, look, I, I, uh. okay, okay, okay. Vigo told me that this, that, uh. she see, she's like trying to gather her thoughts, uh, but it's been a pretty shit last hour. So she's really, uh, trying to kind of gather herself. I need you to focus and I'm going to give her guidance. Okay. I'm gonna roll a history check for her. Plus guidance, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Vico told me this tallow guy was coming to drive this stake in. We were gonna go ahead and oh. save. I missed that in the first time. Did you tell me that? Did you tell me his name? Sorry, that was me as a player. Did he told me this tell guy was coming in to drive the stake. Motherfucker! Oh. His name was yeah, what? Go ahead. No, Tallow? keep going. The tell guy came in to drive the stake. It was supposed to protect the tavern, but he said that I couldn't... Uh, that we had to be careful with spills. It was real confusing. That's, that's the god honest truth. Of course. Where's Vigo now? He's in Malachor. They're all... They, they're on vacation. That's why I was watching the tavern. I'm no, just... No, 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 no. Do... Does Nathaniel, who's written and published books on demonic and devilish languages, definitely is well in tune with the actions of the Nine Hells, do I recognize the Tallow name because sure. I... Sure, history. ...purchased thing. ingredients, I've... Yeah. You can roll me history. I know Dan recognizes the talent. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> a seven. A thirteen. A thirteen. Uh, specifically because you've researched hellish literature, the name Tallow came up a lot in the trade of soul stones. Yeah, yeah. I'm backing up. I'm like standing up from scratch. That like angular, shadowy terror, or like the letting the demon out a little bit. 
is going away, and I'm standing up and just, no, 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 no. Okay, we have problems. This is some soul collecting ritual. We're uh, we're getting subsumed by whatever this is. We need to put a stop to this, and we need to put a stop to it now. That half elf who is here. I missed something earlier. Well, then what He's the dangerous. Why did that have to do with spells and shit? Why would I have to be so careful if this is all going to be fucked anyway? It's the reflections. It's the reflections. There might be something with the well in the center of town. Uh, with the water uh, or being able to look and see. Maybe we can go through a reflection in some way. Get out of here. Or uh, I'm not sure. I just need a moment to think. Um, well, take your fucking time. Yeah, and out of character, that's me opening the table up for people to react or chime yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it, at the moment, I got nothing. <laughs> I am also um, struggling. The okay. I mean, the, the first thought, the, the first thought that, that um, comes to my mind is what you were getting at there about it, maybe I. I Maybe we pass through. I mean, we could uh, attempt to re-enter. What, what, what were the phrases that we've received so far, or that you've received? I don't know how much you've shared those with with us. I'll toss in the notebook, and the last two pages have the first version of the celestial rune, which says, um, and then the second version, which I will reiterate is like mocking like as if it was the original originally sh that was once shrouded and the first version was like a sardonic haha it's cute it's reflection magic thing um the second version says And what Nathaniel will also reiterate, and what will be on that page, is basically just something to the effects of, like, um, Nightwalker can see and mess with people, or can mess with people it sees, knows, question mark, scribble? Seeing through the reflections, and then a sketch of the like bubble coming up, and that's like what's written into it. And he's pacing back and forth, so do like a two step, three step. He's thinking, okay, so here's the problem with trying to go through every time we've come close to a reflection, it's hurt, and he'll show his bleeding hands. Um. What are the specters doing, by the way, while we're having this conversation? So there's still sunlight between you and them. They are just encroaching. They are at the edge of the sunlight, getting a hair by hair closer and closer. Right. I had said earlier that I wanted to be taking them out like ducks in a, like ducks in a row or fish in a barrel shooting gallery style with Eldritch Blast while we were problem sure. solving. Can I'll I get a couple that. in? I'll just say that for the meantime, you deal with the specters at the sunlight's edge. Okay, because God knows uh, I'm picturing there's going to be more. Nathaniel like as yeah exactly <laughs> as he's like periodically rubbing the bridge of his nose he's just sending silvery runes at and dealing with these things and he's going to come back. Here's the situation as I understand it: we're in a ticking time clock. This city is getting sucked up for some dark necrom necromantic ritual by this tallow fellow. The Nightwalker is. Honestly, I think he's a symptom of this that we can't deal with directly. Those things eat towns. It's not a problem that's in our tax bracket. We need to figure out how to get this ritual stopped. Or we need to figure out how to survive. I'm assuming, and he'll look at Jaro, hiding in a cellar and letting all these Eldritch Horror wash over us and hoping we come out on the other side is not really an option. We need to get these people to safety. It. This this bit about uh, reflections and gazes and such. Is there a way to? If there are no reflections, if there are no mirrors, if there's no glass, if there's if we were able to deal with. Uh, 
But what would that gain us? What would that gain us? In about us? three hours, if that, if that. How long do I think the wall's gonna last? Uh, less than 15 minutes? What, 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 when is this you gonna go over through? at it? Total probably, darkness. Probably in five minutes. In five minutes, it's gonna be black in here, and there won't be any reflections. My concern, though, is that there will be things in the shadows. Like, there, there, there that, most certainly will be. Do we think that bringing light into the darkness would be of a cure? I, I've read of a spell that that seems to emit a powerful magical light that, when cast on the <clears throat> on the rod, it's possible may... there might be a ritual or relic in the cleric's temple that would be akin, unless you can do it yourself. Daylight, dawn, something like this. Uh, the way I see it, I think we have uh, five minutes to solve this problem. Experiment if you have it. If you have lights, you send it to the sectors. See if it'll work. All right, we'll blow. let's do it. I. The only other thing I could think about, uh, Jaro, what if you move through a reflection without seeing it? Don't expose yourself, but it still is a thin barrier to the Shadowfell. Of course, there's also the possibility, and he'll like look up at everything else, that we're there already, and this is all kind of a moot point. Eldritch Blast at a Spectre. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have anything. How about my, this? My, can we take gut, a quick five? My... <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, we can take a five if you'd like to. If you guys want to talk about this, I'll take the headset off and you can yeah. sort out your ideas. No, um, I'm cool to keep talking. Yeah, about I, also. yeah, I don't, I don't. Why don't we take a bio break and then I don't care if you're listening or not. Okay, uh, Josiah. I, I will like say. Whether you've talked about it or not, the answer to the puzzle is here. You just have to think about it. Right. No, that's All right. so. So let's let's take a break and come back. All right. Like five? I wasn't trying to cut you off there. I thought you were pausing and thinking, Rob, and I was like, I could use a no, 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 to say no. Hi to at, 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 I same thing. I gotta go say hi to my wife. So all right. So we're all back. You are still out in this plaza. You've been dealing with the, the specters piling out of the tavern. One by one, you've been destroying them. But you are aware the walls are closing. It is getting darker. The hints of sunlight are getting more and more scarce. What do you do? All right, so I think we're all kind of gathered, right? Or I, I can almost imagine... Like the scene of the three of us standing around the camera is probably doing that spinning around, talk, looking at each of us as we kind of yeah. talk mm -hmm. and such. And I, um, I can see the look of consternation on, um, on Nathaniel's face, and I, I think, I think Jaro is just, right. And I think Jaro is is just um, steps back, and he, it's like, I've I've seen you puzzle your way out of trickier situations than this. Have you? Mm -hmm. what, what is it that we know? Uh, that we have a ticking timeline, I think, before we have an ultimate problem we cannot fix. That Nightwalker is something that I don't think we can deal with. Certainly not the three of us, and certainly not without a lot of innocent people dying here. We know that a necromantic ritualist came here and slammed this thing into the ground, and afterwards all this other stuff started happening. We don't know yet if we can just walk through the barrier at the edge of town, but I'm going to like chance to look at it. I don't think we have time, and we can't get everybody else out. So. Well, hold on. So... We're we're sure that this all started with the with the last pounding of the the last pound upon the rod. The post. Is that what you're saying, Nathaniel? Cedric, can you get it next to it? Can we get this out in any way possible? Can you I, I mean uh, turn into a hey. badger or some shit? I don't know. You he tried moving the earth. I mean, that was... If I kick at the dirt, does the dirt physically move? No. In fact, as the you dirt... look down, you're not making footprints. I don't think I'm going to be able to dig this. This rock. Okay. I pick up a rock and I throw it at one of the windows. Which window? One of the ones they're not coming through. 
It breaks. Okay, so we can impact some parts of the world, but not others. I look down at the footprint. I start scuffing the dirt. Is there a distance away from There's the post no... that just starts making footprints? No. You have not made a footprint in the soil. Period. Okay. So... In fact, someone roll me a survival check. That's not gonna be me. I'm walking towards the well. Be... That would okay. be... Indicate that with your token, please. It's gotta be, it's gotta be you, Cedric, doesn't it? Damn it, I rolled it on... How do I display this? Oh, virtual tabletop not just, found. It's okay, just tell me what you rolled. I rolled a 22, I rolled an 18 plus 4. Well done. With a 22, you notice that the, there are footprints in the soil, but they're, they've are they been there for a little bit. You think they've been there since this morning. And you recognize the footprints of you and your allies. Hmm. I, I would reiterate that to Nathaniel saying that these, these footprints are from before. They N Nathaniel has moved off to the well. He's like oh, that's... halfway across. The... <laughs> You're just oh, shouting it at him. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, what are you looking for? Oh, stop. Uh, is it? Do I see a reflection down there? The water is pretty far down. Uh, roll me an investigation check or perception. I'll allow either. I'm sure it matters. 13. 13. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see a reflection in the water. The water's not moving. It's very still. Um, you also see there's a few things around the well. There's buckets, rope, uh, what looks like some sort of like scrubbing yard. And then you see there is a plaque on the little stone. It's not. It looks like the base for an anvil, but there is no anvil there. Ooh, do you yeah, speak? Uh, do you speak giant? I speak everything, motherfucker. Wow, that's my thing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Jeez, <laughs> I can read it. I actually can't speak it. Okay, you read. I can on only the read plaque. it. It is written in giant. Mm. This well will forever be protected and blessed for the causes of Timor. In his name, Drunmir, by the Iron Thane, maker of arms, grand designer beneath the mountain. Son of Tova, Thormir the Steelweaver. Hmm. I look really hard at Bless. Look down at the rest of it. <laughs> Toss on Detect Magic, gave it a cursory look. I think this is more of a commemorative plaque to a Thormir that I might not remember or know about. But or Tova, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, does it appear to have any magic to it? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, you detect basically holy magic. You detect the well is hallowed. Can, can you read? Say that or copy. I can just the, post the, the. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Can you post the, the title or the, black text. Uh, sure. Hold on. I'll come back with that written in the notebook for Cedric to reiterate right. what he said about the footprints. Yeah, and I, I would, sh I would share with Nathaniel that these these footprints they uh, they seem to be. From before, am I remembering that right? They're they're not. We're not making footprints right now. But you are not making footprints right now. Your excellent survival skills tell you within like twenty minutes when these footprints were made, and it was when you were outside before the stake was pounded all the way in. Is is there a veil over reality? Is there a? That's where my that's where my head is going. Is like, have we are we out of phase? <laughs> Um, I think this ties in with Nathaniel's thoughts earlier about maybe the shadow fell is already here. Well, what if what if we've been? I think we're in pushed. some kind of copy or demiplane or like mere fake version of this, right? 
Maybe. If there's no footprints now, but they're from before. Whenever this finished, it like locked us in this little bubble of an instance in time. Maybe. What was the first thing we all remember? Oh, so there was from before. There was and I, I hesitate to even suggest this, but we're scrambling, right? The what have you have you cleared out the the specters that are on the the lower floor? Yes. Like what I'm thinking about is However, the windows teem with movement. Um so you suspect should you see a reflection or something, more of them will appear. <laughs> Okay, I think we need to go through something to get out of here, and I what? am open to options. We are in a bubble that is almost at the Shadowfell, maybe, or is going to oh, get there. Oh, it is. Uh, as, I, as you are saying this, the dome completes. All of you clearly see the enormous form of the Nightwalker. It is now perhaps 200 feet away from the edge of the town and it is moving towards you still I begin talking much quicker I think that we My have two <laughs> options here one is a well that is hollowed for some reason or I another would, yep. blessed by some spirit in this we yeah. jump in the well we fucking see what happens there's a reflection in there that might be less hostile or not it's Jaro starts going and he's the dude who talks to spirits I am starting to follow him I am an outsource expertise kind of guy this seems like a tenuous connection my next choice was jump through the window which has you know that was a, my first thought but I like the well better bad things in the window yeah after you Jaro uh, uh, I mean, first before anything else I need every one of you to make a charisma saving throw I've I know. Those. I'm sorry. What, that's what, what's wrong that's with what you? he it's does. All, it's, all, it's all your fault. It's yeah. all your fault. I'm not <laughs> so. I roll poorly. Eh. Did you see how many attacks I missed? Because I did. 13. Oof. 23. Nathaniel. You succeed. Do you have a point of corruption? I have one. Okay. Uh, Cedric, do you have a point of corruption? I do. Do all of you have a point of corruption? No, I do not. Jaro doesn't. That's right. Okay. Well. Because Jaro went, wanted to save people unlike you other scum buckets. That's right. <laughs> you you saw Eljatoria up there. You just passed your save and didn't get one for some reason. I don't know how. It's like I was allowed to pass one save tonight. Yeah. As the dome. Yeah, you have rolled dog shit. <laughs> yeah, you have. As the dome completes. And you now find yourselves beneath a dark, alien night sky that does oh, not look shaggy. that does not look like the sky you're familiar with. Pyrrhus and Tyrus are nowhere to be seen. Those are the names those of the suns. Winged uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you do see the winged horrors, <laughs> whatever they are, flying high above you. Where did it go? I've lost my spooky noise. There it is. I... The Nightwalker approaches, and you see almost as if it's like a rim of a ring of smoke emerging from the ground. You see people. Hey, calm down, Jaro. You're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Nice try, though. <laughs> I'm in the well. You can't. No, you can't. Go ahead. Uh, a giant DM hand just knocks you back 30 feet. <laughs> um, no. There's a rim of smoke climbing from the earth. And you see the few townspeople that remain. And as you're looking around now, you realize many townspeople have been slain by other specters roaming throughout the darkness. You watch as some of the townspeople who are heading directly towards the temple, as you had originally intended, they, the rim of energy, reaches them first. And you watch as they wither and crumble, aged hundreds of years in an instant, as they slump to the ground. As the rim approaches, those of you who failed in your charisma saving throw but does not have a point of corruption, Jaro, 
You take some damage. You take an exhaustion point. How much health do you have, Jaro? I have 22. <laughs> you take 20 points of necrotic damage. And your maximum health is reduced by that much. <laughs> Better get in that fucking well, big dog. <laughs> Holy shit. Is your max health 2 right now? All the damage it's you've taken. Two. Yeah. It's 2. My max health is now 2. Cedric, yeah. you do have a point of corruption. I do. The whole world goes dark for you. Let me look at your spell list. Got a bunch of fun stuff in there. Yeah, I see that. As you guys swear to God, if you bad touch me, I will end you. <laughs> uh, I require you to cast. That's interesting. I require that you cast Ice Knife at your two allies, targeting Nathaniel. You don't right. see Range this spell happen. Attack. Range spell uh, attack. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to need to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, we both do, I think. You do. Right. Um, whether it hits or not, you both have to make a dex save. Okay. Well, I uh, think this is take me out. But. Probably. You'll probably be brought to zero, but there are worse things that could happen. Hey! Okay, you missed Whoa, the attack. Oh, not 20! Uh, okay. Wow. And he's a rogue. He is a rogue. Um, let me make sure you have yeah. evasion. I don't know if you do. Uh, I don't think so. No. You just take half damage. Please roll the damage for Ice Knife. Uh, the 10 misses. Is... Yeah, the 10 doesn't hit. That's fine. But you, the knife still explodes. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you both succeed on the dexterity save. Oh. Ouch. Okay, let me open that up. Okay. You rolled really well on the cold damage. Wow, you rolled incredibly well, you, you son of a bitch. You both take five <laughs> cold damage. Yeah, I'm at, I drop. Jaro falls unconscious. Hey guys, I will be right back. I gotta help get my dog up. Oh, it's so perfect. I'll, I'll yes, exactly. I <laughs> don't know what's going on anyway. I took five points of I'll damage. Be, I'll be right back. Yes. Mm. How's that happen? We have initiatives. What are we doing? We're about to. As this happens, Nathaniel, you succeeded in your charisma save, but you have a point of corruption. Correct. Roll me a d10. You get to proceed as normal. You can take your oh, turn good. as usual. <laughs> That's great. So what do you do? You see Jaro slump to the ground in front of you from ice that crashes into you from behind. Uh, if he's unconscious, can I Misty Step with him if I'm holding him? Does Misty Step allow you to bring a person with you? No, but I'd be carrying him. It's like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Roll me a persuasion check. Alright. Finally play. Hey, money. Character. He is unconscious, not dead. So he is still alive. He is not an object yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> You can probably carry him, though. You think I can get to the well, the two of us? If you action dash, probably. Hey, can I and pick him up in the same turn? Picking someone I'm up is a that. free action. If yeah, I want to spend my turn, and I will toss him in the well. I want to see what happens. <laughs> okay. 
So you don't jump in the well, you throw him into the well. I drag him there. Uh huh. I think he's. I mean, he looks really bad though, right? He's at two max HP. Two max and HP he just took, and like, twenty points of it. Is he dead? No. You're tossing. You're tossing me into the well. Wait, he took five points of damage. That's more yeah. than twice his max HP. Is he just dead? He succeeded on the dexterity save, which was ten. No, he's at the limit because fi it was five minus two to reach zero, then another minus two. Oh, so he's okay, so at he's the gonna limit. die when he hits the water, whether it's a good good water or bad water. He's dead on the other side, anyways. Uh... If he takes damage from hitting the water. Uh... Okay, we haven't done this. <clears throat> I don't know if you came up in the rules. Can I spend the point of inspiration I earned on a health pot and spend my action to give him a health pot? Am I still yes. glossy eyed? Oh, yeah, you can't see shit. Okay. I'm assuming <laughs> that that was just. I yeah, you can do I, that. I, you missed, and then the thing went off, and he went down. I'll spend. How big of a pot? A standard. Rob gets 16 back. A standard is Ooh. 10. Oh. Ten back, sorry. So, Rob, you're back. Uh, you're alive and conscious with two hit points. I'm pouring yeah. a potion in your mouth and trying to get you up and shuffling you towards the well. I'm turning back to look for whoever threw that fucking ice ball projectile. Shit, what do you I see? You see Cedric standing there, hand raised with a U wand in it, and his face is just covered in shadow. Oh. Okay, um, I need to roll concentration for keeping Hex up when I took five damage. Sure. Con save, right? Yeah, DC's ten. You <laughs> fail, you lose Hex. That's okay. What's going on? We need to get in the well. I don't know. Cedric! <laughs> we need to get in the well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric, can you hear me? Cedric. And I think I already spent my action to give him the potion, right? Mm-hmm. Or are we right out here? of initiative? How's this working? We are handling it like turns, but we haven't rolled initiative. If I've spent my action and I can't give him a spell, or any, if I can't spend anything on him, if I could, I would maybe... Oh, man, I met this guy last night. I don't know. That's up to you guys. How much do you not care about Cedric? I think well, I'm spending my action. No, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me narratively. I'm spending my action. I'm feeding you this potion, turning back, seeing Cedric with shadows, and then I'm like, instead of like gently getting you up, I'm grabbing you, uh, and there's this like moment of almost infernal vigor as I like rip you off the ground. I'm like, we need to get in the well no, and like picking you up and kind of pushing you forward. So he assists you to your feet, whether you like it or not. And I would like to spend my move action to get close to the well. Uh, sure. You can move 30 feet. You're right at the edge of the well. <laughs> you could Misty Step. Ooh. Are you Misty Stepping? <laughs> I'm a bad influence. I, I put Hexblade's curse on the Night I put Hexblade's curse on uh, okay. Chris. Okay, Cedric. On top of everything else, you feel the strange draining pull to the earth below you. Um. All right, Cedric. It's now your turn. Please roll me a charisma saving throw. Got it, boss. You remain in darkness. Roll me a d8. Can I use a point of inspiration to re-roll that? You absolutely can. Come on, Chris. Oh. 
You could push. Stolen car. Stolen car. All I right. I don't know what that I'll means. Push. <laughs> it's like there's just, actually if I say God from Rob, that I'm realizing now I passed on to Chris, which was to play your character like you stole, like you a stolen car for Blades in the Dark. Yeah, I think you're, that Josh, you're yeah. pushing it. Roll yeah. again. Oh, yeah, I'm pushing yeah. it. Oh my god! It's another failure. Oh! And you pushed. Which means a dire consequence. <laughs> jo okay. Oh, it's to me now? <laughs> uh, in a moment, Jaro. Yeah. Here's what you see. Yeah. You stand, you see Nathaniel run past you to the edge of the well. You turn around. Cedric, you've you've seen him before, but not like this. As suddenly he drops to his hands and feet, and he begins to wild shape. But he does not wild shape into any creature you've ever seen before. He twists and bends, spouts another set of limbs, and before you suddenly is a strange abomination of dark energy, dragon, and wolf. You don't know what it is. It's large. We were just yeah. leaving! Cedric, you so... turned into a feral <laughs> Dracolite. Great. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it sounds bad. <laughs> so, I, I think Jaro watching this, like, transpire in, is, you know is in horror of the the situation because he know i mean he he's probably been around a lot of druids and yeah uh, sure in the fey wilds and and everything and he knows the i mean he he's ex certainly seen others wild shape and understands the connection that it it has they have with the spirits and the beings into which they shape so for him seeing this i think it's really a, a recognition that this comes from within right this is this is a reflection of of a spiritual thing within cedric and it is foul and corrupt and i don't think he sees any way to recover cedric from this situation and so that is without a doubt a a kind of like running you know it probably starts out as a slow backing away and turns into a in, into a turn mm. and run and what I'd like to do is, I think at this point, is I'm running. As he starts to kind of gather speed, I'm going to just jump right through Nathaniel and basically take Nathaniel into the well with me. Roll athletics. What am I rolling? Athletics. You're tackling me. Athletics. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty good at athletics, so we'll see. Nice. There we go. Hell yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You tackle Nathaniel, whether Nathaniel's ready for it or not, and both of you are suddenly falling into the well. Cedric, your vision clears, but around its edges is blue, and you see ahead of you the people that called you friends that are abandoning you here forever for the rest of your life. They're leaving you doomed to this creature that's approaching you. How fucking dare they? I need you to roll me an attack. Uh... As a feral Dracolite, you have 60 feet of movement. Um, you sprint up to your allies. Please roll me a d20. Okay. Nathaniel does a 21 mm. hit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Chris, please roll me 3d6. I'm chilling, big dog. You don't, know what, the, you don't know what the bonus is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, he rolled real bad. Okay, you're probably fine. You take 15 points of slashing damage. As just claws 
slash through your upper back, and they're laced with what feels like burning acid as they cut into your flesh. But you're already falling, Nathaniel. Are you still conscious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you turn around looking over the shoulder of Jaro, and you just see this horrible (laughs) dark entity looking down at you. And Cedric, through this twisted vision, you watch as your allies seem to vanish into the water, and the water doesn't really move at all. As Uh, you are chaotic evil at the moment, Cedric, do you pursue them in a fit of hunger, or do you look for something else? Are the other... Are the other townspeople all dead? Yeah. And yeah, I think the chaotic evil crawl down the side of the well after him. Okay. As you leap through the well. Ooh, can I have... Did I get a turn on that as we're falling through? I, I got sure, what do you got? I, popped a, I got? I want to pop a cloud of daggers in the in between the surface of the well and the werewolf guy, so he's got to go through it. Sure. Looks like you... that big sword that was hanging over him, uh, and there's just a dozen replicas that are all like not covered in bandages just hanging in this five foot cube in between us and the well. I have an important question. Do you have to see the cloud of daggers to maintain concentration on it? Mm, No. Okay. Uh, What's the damage on cloud of daggers? Uh... I just clicked it. Roll damage, come on. Uh, 44. Roll 4d4. Because Cedric is out of his mind and leaps through it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Your wild-shaped form of a feral Dracolite takes 13 points of slashing damage, Cedric, but you have a 100-point hit pool to spend that out of, so that doesn't really matter. However... Yeah, go ahead. Plus what? Plus Hexblade's Curse. So, right, sorry. Uh, Hexploit's Curse is not concentration, so go ahead and add that to it. What's the roll Another two, just another two. Okay, just so you two. take 15 points of slashing damage, which almost just drives you more angry. And then, Cedric, the water hits you. But it's not water, or at least it doesn't feel like it. It feels as though a wave of energy just crashes over you, much like what you all felt at the beginning of the adventure, when that stick was pounded into the ground. And as that wave of energy passes through you, and you feel it from your hair to your toes. That's the wrong music. Why is it playing that? You catch on fire. (laughs) Yeah, you burn horribly. (laughs) You go to the extra shadow fell. Uh... Man, that sucks. Oh, well. Damn it. You emerge, all of you, splashing and coughing in the bottom of the well on a fine autumn day in Time War. Cedric, no longer on the same plane as the entity that was controlling you, you are no longer wild-shaped into a feral Dracolite. You have regained control of yourself, though you are full of water in your lungs, all of you coughing as you've emerged within the well in the center of Time War. You hear the sounds of the town around you. It's as if nothing ever happened. Oh, that was horrible. There is a sudden oh. splashing of water, and Scratch Ramble Raven peers up out of the water and says, oh, What the fuck? <clears throat> oh. I think... Uh, you made it! You made it! You fit in tight places. What, what... What happened to me? What... Where, where are oh, we? Oh, you look a lot better than you did last time I saw you. I'm like, reach out and poke him. You have no memory of the mind control. Uh, you have vague visions of just unbound rage at these two but it's it's like a weird nightmare that you had 
The last thing you remember was you were all running toward the well. I think Jaro is just complete. I, I, I assume like the actual damage that we took is still there. Oh yeah, you're still at two hit points. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So I mean, Jaro is just completely decimated. As it went from a a hail like a ladron guy into a feeble. <laughs> like, yeah, it, that just destroyed me. It will all come back when you take a long rest. However, we need to get okay. you up and out of this well. As all of you are in the well, maybe twenty feet down, you're looking up and you see a familiar half-elven face peer over the edge of the well down at all of you, and he just says, "Son of a bitch!" All right, well done. And he just disappears. Oh, God. And fucking misty step. <laughs> <laughs> Counterspell. Oh. <laughs> He did, he did that me. is oh, that is the end of the adventure. You oh. have survived the time war experiment. Well done. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome, dude. Yes, thank you. Let me fun. close the recording there.